passes Walter Johnson on the all-time strikeout list. Sends it back, 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 back. Jason Giambi and the Oakland Athletics all set to defend their division crown. They take on the A-Rodless Seattle Mariners right here on ESPN2. Hi, everybody. Bill Pito in the studio. It's great to have you with us as we continue our coverage of opening day and now opening night. In the event you missed some of the excitement from opening day, how about Roger Clemens as the Yankees defending their world championship taking on the Kansas City Royals. Down goes Hector Ortiz. Eighth inning, Carlos Beltran. Career strikeout number 3,508 for Clemens, and then 3,509. The all-time AL record passing Walter Johnson. Roger spectacular. He gets a victory. Mariano Rivera came on in relief, and the Yankees win it by the count of 7-3. to three. Elsewhere, Baltimore beats Boston 2-1. to one. Pedro for the Red Sox goes 7 full, does not figure in the decision. The White Sox beat Cleveland, even though Juan Gonzalez in his debut for the Indians had two home runs, and Oakland and Seattle to start here in moments on ESPN2. And that game will be called by Dan Schulman and Mike McFarlane. We'll be here throughout the game with updates. Enjoy the game, everybody. Talk to you soon. A full house is filing into Safeco Field here in Seattle, where the Mariners fans always among the most supportive in the game. Jason Giambi and the hard-hitting A's present the opposition tonight as the Mariners unveil their newest sensation, Japanese right fielder Ichiro Suzuki, who has already become a cult hero here in the Pacific Northwest. He will make his Major League regular season debut here tonight at Safeco Field. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman and Mike McFarland with you. It's opening day and night presented by the Home Depot Continue. A great matchup between a couple of rivals of the American League West. The Oakland A's won this division last year with a lot of power. Walks, home runs, a great offense. But now they've added some speed. Johnny Damon's at the top of that lineup. Most certainly gives him an extra weapon. Is actually going to allow Art Howe to manage this year. The first guy with the green light to steal a bag since Ricky Henderson. Feet at the top of the lineup, going to be a great table setter for Jason Giambi in this powerful Oakland A's lineup, looking to be the key to their success this season. Damon had more steals on his own than the entire A's team had as a group last year. It is packed here at Safeco. The first of 19 meetings on the season between Giambi and the A's and the Seattle Mariners. It all begins after this. ESPN 2's Major League Baseball opening day is presented by Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning, and in part by American Airlines, giving you more room throughout coach, and by United States Marine Corps. The change is forever. Well, it feels more like football weather than baseball weather here in Seattle tonight. There was five inches of snow, we were told, just a few miles away from here up in the hills, but that hasn't cooled the enthusiasm at all for the Seattle Mariners. They are back for the 2001 season here at this beautiful ballpark, and what better way to get it started than against one of their key rivals, the Oakland Athletics, as we show you the starting lineup for Art Howe here tonight. And again, as we mentioned off the top, Mike, the big name that jumps out at you is the guy right at the top of the lineup. Johnny Damon, career highs in almost every offensive category last year with the Kansas City Royals. Came over in the big trade, like you said in the opening, Dan. His 46 steals last year were more than the entire Oakland Athletics ball club. And they're going to allow Art Howe to do some hitting and running with the young hitter Ortiz behind him create some opportunities for that big order the big heart of the order for the Oakland A's he does look a little bit different in, in green and gold and who knows how long he'll be in a he's a free agent at the end of the season the Royals felt they wouldn't be able to sign him so they may as well get something for him and the A's were happy to be involved in that three-way deal still the biggest aspect Johnny told me before the game was the, the white shoes <laughs> <laughs> Here at Safeco Field, the Seattle Mariners don't forget, although the A's won the division, it was the Mariners who went further in the postseason, went to the American League Championship Series and took the Yankees to six games before succumbing to the eventual World Series champions. And here they come, including Ichiro Suzuki, who is going by on his uniform and just about all the time 
his first name, Ichiro, on the verge of becoming the first Japanese position player in the major leagues. And we're told they can't keep his jersey in stock in stores around town, that they are selling as many Ichiro jerseys right now as they ever did Griffey or A-Rod or Randy Johnson. And that's a, a pretty remarkable fact. It is. Get rid of one superstar and bring another budding young one in here. And Boy, you said it. They can't keep enough uh, on the racks of his jersey, shirts, anything going with it. We'll tell you more about Ichiro when he comes up on the bottom of the first, but how about the guy on the mound for the Mariners tonight? 24-year-old Freddy Garcia, who missed almost half of last season with a broken bone in his leg, still went 9-5, and 5-1 five, five and one of the month of September. And both Seattle wins over the Yankees in the American League Championship Series belong to Freddy Garcia. He is a budding star. We have two of the best young starting pitchers in the American League going tonight. Tim Hudson starting for the A's. Freddy Garcia for the Mariners as we set the defense behind him here tonight. Well, Carlos Guillen taking over superstar Alex Rodriguez's job at shortstop. Pressure on him to be the solidifier on that middle infield. New double play partner in Brett Boone. Interesting to see how he reacts. He has an outstanding arm, solid defensively, had a good offensive spring. Looking for him to finally be healthy and extend his career and his prospect here in Seattle. And in case you uh, have been away for a while, forgot what season this was, <laughs> we're here to remind you it's 2001. That ground crew's not afraid to write a few things out on that intro. Let's play ball, says the PA announcer here at Safeco. Johnny Damon is ready as he gets set to step in against Freddie Garcia. Terrific breakout season of sorts for Damon a year ago. We mentioned the steals, 46 led the league in a run scored with 136. And now he gets a chance to hit in front of all those thumpers that the A's have in their line. Well, he struggled at the start of the season last year, but really unbelievably hot in the second half of the season to get those career numbers. 1-0 from Garcia, misses, and it's 2-0. Garcia, big kid, 6'4", 235. And everybody around Seattle feels that he's on the verge of becoming a pretty special guy out of the mound. Roller out to second. Brett Boone back in a Seattle uniform makes the play. One down. Right, Freddie Garcia is at his best when he stays top to bottom with that arm motion, working on a downhill plane, down at the knees. Johnny Damon, the routine ground ball to second base. Outstanding change up as well. And here's the Oakland second baseman, Jose Ortiz. And look at his numbers from last year when he was the MVP in the Pacific Coast League. He's a converted shortstop, but they've got a Miguel Tejada there, so Ortiz moves to second. Defense a work in progress, but everybody loves the bat. Well, I tell you, not a single guy in that clubhouse didn't come up to me and say, look, at the power that this guy has is right up there with Giambi, Omedo signs, every one of them puts on a display of power in batting practice. In the hole quickly, 0-2. Ortiz did get 11 at bats with the A's last year. A little bit inside from Garcia. And he actually picked up his first major league hit here in this ballpark off Jamie Moyers. You get a look at Art Howe, who was rewarded with a contract extension just a few weeks ago. 1-2 from Garcia. Inside again. Got a lot of umpires in the crowd here tonight already. Right off the bat. <laughs> what did you notice about the new strike zone from watching some of the earlier games today? They will enforce that high pitch. 2-2 Two -two to Ortiz, just outside. On deck, the American League MVP from a year ago, Jason Giambi. Not exactly uptight before the game today, huh? Never has been, never <laughs> will be. 3-2, it'll flare into right center field. Cameron over into the gap, two down. So Damon the grounds out, Ortiz flies out. And the first at bat of the season and now for Giambi. A guy who is so universally popular that even as the best player on the visiting team, that's the guy you're supposed to boo in this ballpark, and they even cheered him when he was announced before the game. Exactly. They appreciate the talent here in Seattle. 
first pick swinging and a one hopper back to Garcia who has a one two three first Ichiro Suzuki will lead it off against Tim Hudson when we come back for the bottom of the first inning here in Seattle in Seattle for the bottom of the first inning after the A's went in order the Mariners are coming up against right hander Tim Hudson Let's show you the lineup. Lou Pinella has put on the field, and obviously some changes for the Mariners with the departure of Alex Rodriguez, the arrival of Ichiro Suzuki, and maybe the guy to look at is the guy who's got to provide a whole lot of protection for Edgar Martinez this year, John Olerud. Well, he still drove in 100 runs last year, but the one guy, like you said, Dan, he needs to step it up more power-wise, and John Olerud's been told this entire career, you need to hit for more power. Up his ante a little bit in the RBI situation. Be the protection behind Edgar Martinez. Allow this team to get on a little bit of a roll with John Olerud staying hot the entire year. Tough customer on the mound for the A's tonight. 25-year-old right-hander Tim Hudson. The runner-up to Pedro Martinez for the Cy Young Award last year. And an unbelievable 31-8 and eight in his two-year Major League career. Just a young, phenomenal athlete. Ichiro Suzuki, who wants to be known just as Ichiro, so will comply as he steps in and takes outside ball one. A seven-time Japanese League batting champion, seven Gold Glove awards, three MVPs. You can't ask for better credentials than that. A little topper over the mound out to second. He can fly down the line, but they get him by a step. Well, that's one one thing we'll get into tonight is uh, Suzuki speed. Ichiro retired. Look at the defense for the Oakland A's. And we talked about Ortiz trying to get used to a new position. Well, he is. And uh, going in as a rookie, they understand he's going to struggle offensively, but defensively moving from shortstop to second base. Now you have a young middle infield with the youngster, Miguel Tejada, another budding superstar. Going to have to be the proud papa, like he was telling me before the game, trying to coach that young kid through the perils of playing every single day in the major leagues. The ups and downs, trying to keep him on an even keel. But they really like his stuff. Center fielder Mike Cameron comes up his second year with Seattle. And one of his better seasons last year. 1-0 swung on and missed a ball and a strike. Kind of a, a free swinging guy to have up in the two spot. He's got a very good speed but he doesn't get on base all that often and, and strikes out quite a bit. But Lou Pinella is going to have to be creative with this lineup having lost some of the players they've lost. They're going to have to score in a variety of ways. Right on the corner. And it's one and two. Be interesting to see if Lou Pinella opens things up with Suzuki on first base. Uh, the speed told he was the fastest player down in the Arizona spring training. See if get Mike Cameron driving balls into the gap, scoring on doubles, a little bit of a hit and run. Trying to force Mike Cameron to be a little more patient and put the ball in play on a on a more consistent basis. Two and two the count on a Cameron 267 a year ago with the 19 home runs and one of the many Seattle hitters who had much better success away from this ballpark. His numbers drastically different. Two two thought about it but check the swing and he takes inside. Cameron rewarded with a three year deal in the offseason after a very successful first year with the Mariners. Here's the 3 2 from Tim Hudson, and it's fouled off. Tim Hudson opting to go to the changeup there on a 3 2 count. Throws the changeup when he needs to throw a strike, and the fork ball when he's looking for the strikeout. Very confident. People seem to think he's cocky out there on the mound, but. You know, having caught him for a year and, and knowing the young man, just very, very confident. It's not cockiness, it's confidence in his ability, and it shows, and the players behind him respect that. 31 and 8, you can be however you, you want to be out there. 3-2 <laughs> <laughs> to Cameron. And it's fouled out of play again. And Hudson's not a big guy. Doesn't throw 95, 96 miles an hour. He's the kind of pitcher sometimes that it gets overlooked when it comes time to draft kids out of high school or college because there's nothing about him that on uh, first viewing blows you away. Exactly right, but he does have a heart, heart of a lion. Very, very big competitor in whatever he does. Again, the 3-2. And Cameron fouls it off again. He's having a good at bat here, already having seen eight pitches. 
And after Cameron's done one way or the other it'll be Edgar Martinez. And we may learn about a lot about Edgar this year. We all know he's one of the best hitters in baseball but he's got less protection now than he's ever had in this Seattle lineup. Three two taken low. What a quality of bat for Cameron. Outstanding. We talked earlier about Tim Hudson and his grips. The standard four seam fastball, you can see him right across the very top part of the four seam. The two seamer, he gets on the side a little bit more. More, more times than not, a two seam grip is right along those, but Huddy's uh, two seamer, he gets a little extra sink on there. The little star change up with his fingers on the side and the thumb underneath. That's the one he throws more for a strike in the power fork ball. You notice the thumb right on the outside seam. Again, going along with his arm slot. Ball where he gets the best release and the best action on it. Cameron at first, one out, a swing and a miss by Edgar Martinez. Edgar's had some very good success against Hudson, and he's really the only Seattle hitter who can say that. He's four for nine in his career. And look at his numbers from a year ago. At the age of 37, he had a career-high 37 homers and led the American League in RBIs with 145. Just amazing. Cameron a pretty good lead over at first and Hudson takes a lot of time and then finally throws over to first Cameron speedy 24 steals a year ago. <laughs> Martinez has hit at least 320 each of the last six years the only major leaguer who can say that Hudson works and a base hit into left field for Edgar. Cameron will stop at second, and the Mariners have two on with only one out. Year in and year out, Edgar Martinez, the one thing he refuses to do is be fooled on an off-speed pitch. Concentrates on the center of the ballpark, gets a changeup up in the zone, stays right on it, concentrating on keeping his hands inside the ball. The guy is just phenomenal. Anybody at home that wants to learn how to hit from the right side, model yourself after Edgar Martinez. First and second one out for the Mariners here in the bottom of the first and here comes John Olerud. Kind of a typical Olerud year. Hits for a pretty good average, drives in the runs, walks a lot, better than 100 times. Different kind of a role for him this year. Hudson works and Olerud waves at it 0-1. He was fooled. We have a matchup here of two of the best Two way baseball players that collegiate baseball has ever seen. Tim Hudson was the SEC player of the year his senior year at Auburn. He hit 396 with 18 homers and won 15 games. And John Olerud was an All American as both a pitcher and a DH at Washington State. Hudson chose pitching, or pitching was chosen for him. Olerud chose hitting. And I think we'd have to say both of them made a pretty they good made choice. The right choice. Exactly <laughs> right. Tim Hudson was very fond of that big barrel of aluminum bat, he said. <laughs> Could care less about the 15 wins. He was more impressed with the home runs. And Hudson, about 160 pounds, soaking wet. <laughs> Hard to imagine him hitting 396 with all that power. The 0 2 to Olaru. Drive center field right at Terrence Long, who makes the catch as the runners retreat. Tim Hudson, notice Ramon Hernandez setting up, and Huddy, when he gets in trouble, is when he's trying to throw that ball, starting it on the inside hip of a left-handed batter and it runs too much out over the plate and John Olerud smoked that ball to center field one pitch Tim Hudson got away with two out with two on now and Hudson to face Seattle second baseman Brett Boone in his second tour of duty with the Mariners this is down and away ball one now this is the, the right-handed bat that I think could be a huge key for the Seattle Mariners this year. Brett Boone has put on 15 pounds of solid muscle. Hardly recognized him when I saw him. Just looking very, very nice. Feeling very comfortable coming back to Seattle and looking to do some damage in this ballpark. 
Tyson will look back at Cameron and the 1 0 in there. Well, the Mariners are hoping that just about everybody on their lineup can do a little bit more than they did last year. If Boone can give them a little more offense than they got at second base last year. If Dan Wilson behind the plate, David Bell at third, if they can up their numbers a little bit from disappointing seasons a year ago, then Lou Pinella feels collectively they've still got a chance to score a lot of runs. Ground ball slowly hit out to short. Tejada onto Ortiz to force Martinez to end the inning as Hudson gets out of the jam. Scoreless through one here in Seattle. Here in Seattle, second inning between the Mariners and the Athletics. The final game here on opening day presented by the Home Depot. Already some very interesting moments in all the day games. Roger Clemens, a big milestone here today. Olmedo Signs takes a strike from Freddy Garcia to begin the second. As Signs is the DH here tonight. Right handed batter, pretty much a platoon guy last year. He's starting tonight because John Jaha opens the season on the DL, coming back from shoulder surgery. He's at Triple A Sacramento getting some of the bats. Jaha felt he was ready and should have started the season, but the A's wanted to be a little careful with him. Yeah, he was none too pleased about having to go to Sacramento, but they felt. With these games starting off against the division rivals right off the bat, they needed their full horses going right now, and Olmedo signs a very, very underrated hitter. And what a schedule it is for the American League West teams. They all begin the season with 19 consecutive games against division opponents. Signs with a fly ball, very shallow left center field, making it look easy is Cameron. More baseball comes your way on Wednesday night. How about the New York Mets and the Atlanta Braves if you want to talk about division rivals. Others of you will see the Chicago White Sox take on the Cleveland Indians. David Wells had a good start for the White Sox against the Indians this afternoon. Then later on ESPN2, Gary Sheffield and the Dodgers against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Others will see the Padres against the Giants. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. One out in the second inning, third baseman Eric Chavez coming off a terrific season a year ago gets a chance to come up. 1-0 from Garcia just outside of ball two. It seems like every guy who comes up came up through the system and is loaded with talent. Loaded with talent, loaded with the knowledge of the system that they're trying to do, get ahead in the count and let it rip. That is something they preach right up and down the system. Right? Starting from day one in rookie ball, Work the count, make the pitcher show you all his pitches, and attack when in, you're in a hitter's count. Chavez will draw the walk. The first base runner allowed by Garcia here tonight. The A's a year ago were second in the American League in drawing walks and second in the American League in hitting home runs. That's why they were one of the best offensive teams in baseball. They proved you can do it without a lot of 300 hitters. Now, not everybody can do it that way. Not everybody has those kinds of skills. But when you've got a couple of Giambis and a Chavez and a Miguel Tejada, this guy right here. I mean, this guy's a shortstop. And look yeah, at the numbers monster, that he put up. Monster season for this young man. Only Alex Rodriguez had more homers and more RBIs from the shortstop position a year ago. Then Tejada did, and I'm not sure we should say a rod around this stadium right now. It might be a dangerous thing to do. They were showing some bloopers on the, on the scoreboard. The fans were letting a rod have it. Oh boy, <laughs> they, they they haven't forgotten to say the least. A fraud. They did enjoy his error in Puerto Rico yesterday. The Mariners will play the Texas Rangers this weekend in Arlington, and then the Rangers will be here two weeks from tonight. So it won't take Seattle fans long to get it out of their system against A-Rod. Want to know the count on Tejada. Chavez at first, one out in the top of the second inning. And that pitch a little bit too high, ball two. And this is where the Oakland A's get dangerous. One out, all of a sudden you got a walk. Then you can hit a base hit. And then you got first and third, and someone comes up and hits a ball in the gap. That's the way this team works itself. Miguel Tejada in a triple count now, looking for one pitch out over the plate, looking to do some damage with it. Garcia's thrown six consecutive balls. And make it seven. Look at 
Dan Wilson of the mound for the second time already in this inning. Well, one thing I've noticed about Freddie Garcia tonight is he is throwing extremely hard. 95, 96 consistently. He has that outstanding changeup. Hasn't thrown it too many times, but maybe hyped up a little bit for this opening day start. Really running it in there with some velocity. It is Garcia's first ever opening day start. Obviously, for many, many years, those went to Randy Johnson by default, but you've got a couple of very young, talented pitchers getting their first opening day starts here tonight in Garcia and Hudson. Missed again. Back to back walks issued by Garcia. Well, nothing pleases Oakland GM Billy Bean like a couple of walks and then a three run homer. And their batting average, well, it was really not among the best of the American League last year. The steals were right down at the bottom, but look at how impressive all the other numbers on this list are. On base percentage and the slugging percentage, what Billy Bean, Paul B. D. Podesta, assistant general manager, they preach and they believe in wholeheartedly. And you can see the way it worked for the Oakland A's last year. Now with Johnny Damon at the top of the lineup, the steals obviously are going to go way up. The batting average probably will go up as well. And the A's have lost a little power. Some of their players are gone from last year. Matt Stairs is no longer ben with Green. them. Ben Green went in that three-way trade. Randy Velarde's not here. They might hit fewer home runs, but they can diversify the offense a little bit more this year, and they may wind up scoring as many runs just in different exactly ways. Exactly right, creating and manufacturing. Center fielder Terrence Long. He hit 18 home runs last year as he takes outside ball one. Nine consecutive balls. Thrown by Garcia. Luke Pinnell has already been to the mound. Dan Wilson has been to the mound twice. And now the crowd is trying to do what it can in support of Garcia. Swing and a miss. One and one. Terrence Long none too pleased with himself. A little two-seam fastball down out of the zone. Long. Took himself out of his game plan. Runner up a year ago for American League Rookie of the Year to Kazu Sasaki of the Mariners. Two on, only one out. One one pitch to Long, and he chased it one and two. There's that good Freddie Garcia changeup. Dan Wilson going out there talking to him. Lou Pinella, start mixing some things up. You're hyped. Over the top changeup, down in the zone, outstanding. Veteran catcher Dan Wilson. One two pitch and it's fouled out of play left side. You can see again as you mentioned to Mike how hard he's throwing when he's throwing his fastball it's 95 and above. Exactly. Good riding four seam fastball a guy that can pitch up in this new strike zone. Freddie Garcia with the riding running fastball. He's had a better success against Long though in this at bat with the off speed stuff. Again the one two. Got him. Long went fishing. And it comes up empty. Two down. But not, not too good a productive at bat for Terrence Long. Swings at the first, first ball down in the zone. Then he comes back with that changeup again. Dan Wilson, great job of blocking, smothering the ball in front of him. Terrence Long out on the front side. A little over anxious on opening night. Now Freddie Garcia. Still was in the situation where a ground ball and you're out of the inning. Now two outs. Looking to get out with no damage done. Just like Tim Hudson did in the bottom of the first. He had two on and one out and got out of it. Here's Jeremy Giambi, the starter in right field tonight. And a guy hoping to emerge from his brother's shadow as much as possible and started making his own mark. And he certainly got the ability to do that as he takes high ball one. Giambi figures right now to be a platoon player in right field with Adam Pyatt, a right-handed bat. Giambi certainly with some good credentials. Big Brother's got some terrific numbers. Little Brother hit 372 at Double A a couple of years back, 254 last year with 10 homers. Has a very good idea about what he needs to do at the plate. Stays within himself. Doesn't play the big game like his brother. Knows what it takes to get him going is his brother's best swing analysis. Can analyze his brother's swing, make a few comments here and there. 
Jason's ever in trouble. Jeremy has a knack of getting him out of it. 2-0 from Garcia. Down and away, ball three. And Jeopardy of loading the bases on walks here in the second inning. That second to Chavez, at first to Hanna. Long struck out for the second out, and it's 3-0 on Jeremy Giambi. Right down the middle, 3-1. and one. He told you it was chilly. It was drizzling earlier today, but when the clouds broke, they opened the roof here at Safeco. Three one. Got him three and two. Boy, was he fooled. Boy. Dan, look at the action on this changeup going down and away from Jeremy Giambi. Perfect location, great action on the ball. <laughs> Keep smiling, stay warm. Runners will be on the move. 3 2. Got him. What a bounce back effort from Freddy Garcia, striking out Long and Giambi to strand a couple and end the threat for the A's here in the top of the second. Not many seats to be had here at Safeco Field here tonight. Scoreless game between the A's and the Mariners. Season opener for both teams. Bottom of the second inning, Al Martin, David Bell, and Dan Wilson are coming up for Seattle against Tim Hudson. The Mariners threatened in the first. Two on with one out, but couldn't score. And here's Martin, who is the opening day left fielder for Seattle. Came over in a trade from San Diego last year. His combined numbers, you see. He did much better, though, with the Padres than he did with the Mariners. Hudson ready. First pitch. Chopped to the right side. Nicely done by Jason Giambi. One down. Of course, Giambi's big story, or one of the big stories, is the ongoing contract situation for him. He's a potential free agent at the end of this season. They've come to terms on money. What the A's and Giambi can't agree on is a no trade clause, and right now, it's a stalemate. Dead stalemate. David Bell, the batter, he'll take it high, ball one. He just stuck it. During some some part of Jason's next four years, he's going to be a 10-5 guy, meaning 10 years, 10 years in the major leagues, five with the same organization, and it gives him the right of refusal for trades. And that's the sticking point. What he wants is a complete no trade, so that the A's don't have any opportunity to trade him before he becomes a 10 and 5 player. And the A's have offered him a no trade for the first couple of years, but then there's a window of about a year and a half before he becomes a 10 and 5 when they want to be able to trade him in case things aren't going well the team's losing money and they can no longer afford the contract and Giambi says but I want to commit to you I want to stay here give me a complete no trade and right now the A's are saying well we, we can't meet you halfway on that one two one pitch just outside of ball three and although he doesn't have 10 12 years in the majors it's hard to think of a guy who represents his franchise better and it means more to his franchise right now than Jason Gianni. Exactly. Three and one, the count on David Bell. No score, second inning. And a ground ball to short, two hopper to Miguel Tejada. And the throw dug out by Giambi, two down. Flashy defensive player who has a lot with the bat as well. And a product to the A's productive farm system. We saw Miguel Tejada all the time on the highlight films with outstanding defensive plays. Very strong arm. One of the hardest young workers. Hardest workers that I've seen at such a young age. Still takes hour worth of ground balls before batting practice, during batting practice. Constantly working to get better. Here's Dan Wilson, the longtime catcher for the Mariners, who got one of the biggest ovations of anybody on the team in the pregame introductions. Coming off his most difficult season offensively, but had a big spring. And the Mariners are hopeful he'll get back to where he was three, four years ago when he was one of the better hitting catchers in baseball. Chavez in on the grass to make the play to get a Wilson. And the Mariners are gone in order in the second. It remains scoreless here in Seattle.
ESPN 2's Major League Baseball Opening Day, presented by Home Depot, is brought to you by Warner Brothers' new motion picture, Swordfish, in theaters everywhere this summer, and by Right Guard Extreme Sport. Get extreme, get right guard. Top of the third inning, Oakland catcher Ramon Hernandez is ready to face Freddy Garcia. Scoreless game between Oakland and Seattle. Garcia works and right down the middle with a strike 0 and 1. If you're the A's, even if you hit ninth, you got to have some pop. And Ramon Hernandez caught better than 140 games, hit a 14 home run, 62 RBIs. Pretty good production from the nine spot in the lineup. Broke Ray Fossey's club record for games caught. Sal Fasano, who was your teammate for a couple of years, is City, yes. now the uh, in his second year as the backup to Hernandez, who misses high ball two, two and one. You had some time, a lot of time with Kansas City your last couple of years with the A's. What was it like to play with this bunch as they were developing? So, so, yeah, everyone talks about the frat party atmosphere, Dan, and it truly was. But it, when it was game time, it was time to go to war, time to go to battle, and it still is the mantra in that clubhouse. Have all the fun you want. But come back, come ready to play night in and night out, and that's exactly what this ball club is all about. Yes. Getting the job done. Two years ago, when Giambi was still developing into the person that he was, as there's a line drive off the bat of Hernandez all the way down into the corner, and he is chugging for second. Was Giambi already the a leading force in that clubhouse a couple of years ago? Yes, he definitely was. Uh, you know, if Art had a question, how, how's the morale of the troops? As you see Ramon Hernandez just jump on a fastball up in the strike zone. Ramon's going to have a solid year this year. Had a tough time dealing with the rigors of catching every day, but says he's ready to go. He's in great shape this year. but. Back to Jason, he, he's the guy in the clubhouse where if you have a problem, he's kind of the mediator, the go-between to Art Howe. And Art listens and takes his opinion seriously, as does Billy Bean. Johnny Damon, the batter, first pitch swinging. He pops it up right out in front of the plate. And Wilson will make the catch for the first out of the inning as Damon fails to advance the runner, which is not really something the A's worry about a whole lot, but Damon is one of those guys who tries to get it done. And that's what's frustrating to Johnny Damon right now. Gets a pitch in the zone. All he has to do is make a productive out. We talk about it. Get a ball over to the right side. Move Ramon Hernandez to third base. Runner on third base, less than two outs. Get something positive out of here at bat. Johnny knows he doesn't have to carry the weight of, of the guys that they lost coming in here and be the savior to get him over the hump, but uh, opening night jitter is probably going for Johnny Damon right now. Jose Ortiz, the second baseman, takes a strike. He saw his numbers from AAA a year ago. He continued to swing a hot bat in spring training for the A's this year. He had 27 hits for Oakland in the spring, and 15 of them were for extra bases. Garcia from the stretch in the 0-1 and drops a little bit low to even up the count. Randy Velarde was the second baseman of the eighth last year now with Texas. As Garcia takes a bit of a slow stroll back up to the top of the mound after not getting the call. Just inside a 2-1. That's one thing the Oakland A's team lost was the infield leader in Randy Velarde was a calming influence to Miguel Tejada. Now you have the young second baseman and Jose Ortiz. You know he's going to struggle at some point during the season. It's going to be a maturing process throughout the season for him. 2-1 late on the swing and he fouls it off right side 2-2. Two and two. No, one thing the A's have chosen to do and have also had to do is to break in young players because once some veterans on our art house team reach a certain level and start earning a certain amount of money the A's just can't afford them anymore so exactly. their farm system has to be productive. Two two and a swing and a miss by Ortiz as Garcia comes up with his third strike out of the night. Well, now you see Dan Wilson, Freddie Garcia starting to get into a real good rhythm. 
When he was in trouble earlier, he was going to his changeup. Now he's getting the breaking ball over, getting good bite, good torque on it, down in the dirt, trusting Dan Wilson to block that ball, taking advantage of the youthfulness of, of Ortiz to go into a chase zone to expand his zone. Nice pitch out of the strike zone from Freddy Garcia. Now let's see how carefully they pitch to Jason Giambi here with two outs and a base open. Olmedo signs on deck. This will be the unintentional intentional walk. Go after the right hander. In every meeting you go into with your pitcher and catcher. Who's the guy you will not let you beat you. And that's Jason Giambi on this Oakland A's team. Make Olmedo signs beat you in this game. High 2 0. Oh. And to Jason's credit, he knows this going in. When it comes to a certain count, certain time in the ball game, he will expand his strike, his strike zone to try and get that big base hit, that big RBI. Take himself out of his game, but to try and do it for the benefit of the glove. He walked 137 times last year, and he's about to draw his first walk of the 2001 season here. It will be an intentional walk issued to Giambi to put runners at first and second with two down and bring up Olmedo signs and really Lou Pinella making the percentage play no disrespect to signs but he's a right handed hitter and this guy's a left handed batter who won the MVP last year. Signs did hit 313 a year ago with nine homers and only 214 at bats. Yeah, who kicked around in the minors for many, many years, eight years in the minors before getting a chance with the A's last season. Two on, two out as the A's try to break on top. Garcia misses outside of ball one. Trying to get a little bit restless with Garcia's lack of control in the last couple of innings. 10 pitches in the first inning to get out of the first. 23 pitches in the second inning. Struggling here in the third again. I look back at the runner in the 1 0. Swung on and laced into the gap in left center field. This one will get all the way to the wall for extra bases. Hernandez will score easily. Giambi is going to be held at third as the ball's kicked around a little bit, but no further damage done. It's an RBI double for signs and the A's take a one to nothing lead. Well, I said on the onset about the ability of Olmedo signs very very good fastball hitter said how underrated he is. Look at him get his load. There's a high strike coming in at 95 96 miles an hour still has the ability to climb on top of it. This guy came out of nowhere Dan a couple years ago. We were wondering where did this guy go. How can he not be up with the Chicago White Sox and Oakland A's sure are glad he's here. Spent a lot of time down in the Chicago system before getting a chance with the A's drives in a run moves Giambi to third and now Eric Chavez is the batter. He walked his first time up. Garcia catches the corner. Chavez hoping to become truly a full time player this year. He didn't get a ton of at bats against lefties last year and he didn't even hit 200 against them. Signs was often the guy who would play third base or Adam Pyatt also played third base against left handed pitching but Chavez wants to become a 155 160 game a year guy. Well if Olmedo signs continues to swing the bat like he's capable of you have got to have him in the lineup somewhere somehow especially if John Jaha comes back off the DL. One one to Chavez boy he geared up for that one didn't he. I'm not trying to slap it the other way. <laughs> That's not in the Oakland playbook. A good riding fastball from Freddie Garcia. Big load by Eric Chavez. Futile. Garcia out in front of one and two, and Chavez chases and strikes out to end the inning. But the A's break on top. Olmedo signs, drives in a run, and it's one to nothing, Oakland. of the third of the A's one of the Mariners nothing on an RBI double by Olmedo signs Seattle shortstop Carlos Gee and the number nine batter is going to lead it off against Tim Hudson he will take a strike he of course is not trying to replace Alex Rodriguez he is merely playing the position that Alex Rodriguez played 
for the Mariners and interesting for Guillen two years ago he was the opening day starter at second last year the opening day starter at third and now he's the opening day starter at short which is his natural position he wasn't moving that guy that was that short no. though. <laughs> <laughs> another strike going to Guillen last year seven homers 42 RBIs in 90 games one of the players who came over from the Houston Astros in the Randy Johnson trip. 0 2. And if Hernandez could find it, which he does, fire down to first just in time. So chalk up a strikeout for Tim Hudson. Now the second in bat of the night for Ichiro. He's still being announced here in the stadium as Ichiro Suzuki. There are a lot of Fans who have really come to adore him in a hurry, even though for most of them, this may be the first time they're ever seeing him in person. Seattle, of course, as you would imagine, has become Japan's favorite team with Kazu Sasaki and now Ichiro Suzuki both playing here. He has been characterized with the high batting average, a guy who hits the ball the other way more often than not. He's, he's been called a Tony Gwynn. He's been called a Johnny Damon. He's been called a Brett Butler as everybody tries to figure out what kind of a player he is and how good he is. Chopper to first. And a Giambi will make the play for the second out as we go back for an update with Bill Pito in the studio. Dan, thank you very much. Opening day, Pac Bell Park. The Giants hosting the Padres. Top four, it's Weeky Gonzalez to left. Tony Gwynn. Going to try to score. Barry Bonds to the plate. A developing situation. Gwynn out of the plate. And bottom five. Career home run number 495 for Bonds. Levon Hernandez goes seven and a third. Bonds' his son gets a kiss. Giants win a 3 2. And Giants and Padres, you'll be, be seeing them in a regional action Wednesday night as part of the Wednesday night doubleheader on ESPN and ESPN 2. Good to see Tony Gwynn playing, but kind of scary to see him running that hard and sliding for the plate. You just never know how long he's going to stay healthy. Big key to the Padres. Two outs, nobody on here in the third, and the batter is Mike Cameron. Got to play hard, Tony Gwynn. Only way he knows how. Yeah. He's not going to hold up. some chances to go elsewhere but it looks like he's going to finish his career in a Padre uniform. Not too many guys around who are playing their whole career in one uniform. 2-0 to Cameron at the knees. 2-1. Boy Tim Hudson sure is finding his zone. 27 pitches coming into this inning. Quick out. Always a battle trying to get Tim Hudson to use the defense behind him. And in the past, Dan, that, that could have been a curse, but the way things have been solidified throughout the middle infield here, throwing strikes, getting out there, minimizing your pitches, minimizing the time you're out there on the mound has been a big key to Tim Hudson's success lately. He's retired seven in a row after getting in trouble in the first inning. First and second one out, he got out of that. And the Mariners haven't been able to touch him since. The 2 2 to Mike Cameron. No appeal, no swing, full count. Can't get enough on Ichiro. Looking pretty suave there. <laughs> and that's the thing to keep in mind about him. I mean, he's a rookie by Major League standards. But having won seven batting titles and three MVPs in Japan, he is used to all the attention that he's getting. He and his wife. So the story goes, got married in Los Angeles because she's a very popular television personality. He's the most popular player there. They, they just can't go out in public. So they moved their wedding to L.A. so they could have a little privacy as Cameron draws the walk. And by all accounts, Ichiro, and this is from people who have played in Japan, managed in Japan, it is Michael Jordan and Alex Rodriguez and Tiger Woods and then some in terms of his popularity over in Japan. All rolled into one. That's scary. He loves the anonymity of being able to walk around Seattle and not everybody recognizing him, although I imagine that's going to change pretty soon. In a hurry. Posters splattered mm -hmm. everywhere. Here's Edgar Martinez. He has the only hit of the night for the Seattle Mariners. 
Cameron on the move. Martinez taking all the way. Head for slide. He's in there safely. Now he's going to try for third. Here comes the throw from center and in safely with another head first slide. Welcome to the new Seattle Mariners. Well, this whole stolen base starts with a great jump by Mike Cameron. Catches Tim Hudson in an off-speed pitch. Ramon Hernandez, great transfer of the ball into the glove, but sinks into the line. Ortiz not getting there, over to stop the ball. Great hustle by Mike Cameron. Around at third with two outs. And the Mariners' best hitter at the plate, Edgar Martinez, with a count of 1-0. and oh. Down and away, ball two. Here's where the issue of John Olerud hitting behind Edgar Martinez comes into play. We saw how the Mariners didn't want anything to do with Giambi, took their chances with signs who hurt them. How will other teams approach Martinez in this kind of a situation with Olerud waiting on deck? Well, basically, you have two left-handed hitters up right now. Edgar Martinez hits right-handers just as well as he hits left-handers. A left-hander out on the mound, definitely you pitch around Edgar Martinez, go after John Olerud. But in this situation, Phil Tim Hudson has to go after Edgar as well as John Olerud. You can't get yourself into a big inning here with two outs. After falling behind 3-0, and oh, now they'll put Martinez on. Brad doesn't like that at all. John Olerud may see a fair amount of that over the course of the season. Edgar immensely popular here in the Pacific Northwest, as is John Olerud, who's a native son. Born in Seattle, went to high school here, went to Washington State. And after stints with the Blue Jays and the Mets, came back home. A 299 career hitter. He's only hit over 300 twice, but when he does, he really does. Like 399. <laughs> 363 and a 354, the two times that John Olerud's hit over 300. First and third, two down, one to nothing. Oakland as Olerud takes outside. Only the third inning, a situation here where you have a base open, albeit second base, still gives you a chance to possibly pitch around John Olerud to go after the right-handed hitting Brett Boone, who hasn't seen Tim Hudson at all or his stuff. The 1-0 to Olerud, taken for a strike. There's the behind-the-count changeup. The ability of Tim Hudson to change speeds and throw the off-speed pitch consistently for a strike. There are a lot of guys in the majors who throw four pitches, but Tim Hudson throws four pitches effectively. Effectively. Checks the runner at first, Martinez. Cameron around at third. Two down. And the 1-1 pitch on the way. Olerud thought about it, but he took a strike. Again with the changeup. Now you got a chance to force John Olerud to expand his zone. Here's the back-to-back -back changeups. This one stays up in the zone a little bit more than Huddy wanted to. Now you have a chance to spike a couple fork balls in the dirt, see if John Olerud will chase after it. Comes out of the same arm slot with a firmer velocity. Comes in looking like a fastball, and then it's in the dirt. Two on, two out. Steps off, tries to catch Edgar napping at a first base. Fans just hate that move. Right? Yeah, that, that move's <laughs> being called from the from Art Howe, Ken Maka, the bench coach. I'm gonna go for the fork ball in the dirt, possibly. Got him. You got it. Hernandez again has to complete the strikeout. That will end the inning as Hudson gets out of trouble again through three and Safeco. One to nothing, Oakland leading Seattle. Possible exception of Pac Bell Park in San Francisco. This is the best smelling ballpark around, isn't it? Hands down. <laughs> Makes a guy hungry. 
Fourth inning, one nothing A's. Miguel Tejada up, first pitch swinging, bouncer to short. Carlos Guillen will make the play one down. Freddie Garcia would like a couple innings of that. First pitch hacking by the Oakland A's. Garcia touched for a run last inning on the RBI double by Almedo Sides. Here's Terrence Long, who struck out his first time up. One nothing Oakland, a fourth inning. And down low, ball one. And right down the middle for a strike, one and one. Freddie Garcia finds himself at the top of a pretty formidable group of pitchers for the Mariners as Long slashes one the other way fair down the left field line. Martin to cut it off before it reaches the corner but it's still an easy double for Long. Boy, Terrence Long had a breakthrough season last year for the Oakland A's doing things like this pitch down great pitch by Freddie Garcia but Terrence Long keeps his head and body over the ball extends through it keeps the ball fair that's hard to do on a pitch outside the barrel going one way the ball going the other and without that ball slicing out of play Dan great piece of hitting by Terrence Long one out double for Long third hit of the night for the A's. They've all been doubles. Ramon Hernandez, Olmedo Sainz, and now Terrence Long. There's Jeremy Chiamba. He struck out his first time up. Bell, the third baseman, was in even with the bag. Now he's backed up a couple of steps as Giambi pops it out of play. Started to mention Garcia being at the top of a pretty impressive group of pitchers, which has been depleted some because of injuries. But Seattle, once a team known only for its offense, now has a, a deep and talented group of pitchers. Aaron Seeley is in the rotation, John Halama, Jamie Moyer. And when he comes off the DL, hopefully in a couple of weeks, Paul Abbott has got a sore shoulder right now. Throw to third, bounced in, and Terrence Long has it stolen. When a runner, st when a runner steals third base, he does it off the pitcher. Freddie Garcia not giving him the time of day. Middle infielders not busting him back, keeping him close at all. Terrence Long says, you're going to give it to me. I'm going to take it. Now you're in a situation where a fly ball scores you less than two outs looking for Jerry, Jeremy Giambi to get that productive out. And the Mariners have brought the infield in here early in the game, already trailing one to nothing. One one a pitch just inside of all two. Freddie Garcia out on the mound now. You're going to try and jam Jeremy Giambi or get him to try and poke something. Pound him hard in, jam himself with the pitch or off speed down and away right there. Even if you lose him, you've still got the double play in order with a right handed batter coming up. And you're, yes, exactly. And you miss, so what? You're one pitch away from getting out of the inning still. It's the one pitch Garcia couldn't find in the third. 3-1 to Giambi. Challenged him, and it's fouled back full count. Hard in. Look for a changeup down and away here from Freddie Garcia. See if Jeremy will expand his zone. Long down at third with just one out. Garcia has already walked three tonight, one of them intentionally. The A's lead one to nothing. Full count pitch, low ball four, and runners on the corners. We have a final from the NCAA championship game. Mike Krzyzewski and the Duke Blue Devils have won their third national title in the last 10 years with a 10-point win over Arizona. Congratulations to Duke. And for those of you who may just be tuning in, <laughs> 
We're at the bottom end of opening day presented by the Home Depot. Dan Schulman and Mike McFarland with you here in Seattle. It's a one to nothing lead for the Oakland A's over the Seattle Mariners here in the fourth. And the A's threatening for more with the runners at first and third one out. Ramon Hernandez facing Freddie Garcia in taking a strike. The A's got their run in the third inning on an RBI double by Olmedo signs that scored Hernandez who doubled to lead off the inning. Here in the fourth Terrence Long doubled with one out stole third then a walk issued to Jeremy Giambi and Freddie Garcia who was very good early has really struggled recently to find the strike zone more than anything. And more often than not, Mike, it's been with his fastball. When he's had some success, it seems it's been with his off-speed Well, stuff. we talked about his velocity being in the mid-90s, which isn't exactly his game. More, more times than not, he's going to be 92, 93 miles an hour in that situation where he can control his fastball a little bit better. But Dan Wilson has done a great job lately of mixing, mixing in the curveball as well as the changeup. Throw to first. You saw Brett Tomko warming up in the Seattle pen. He's the designated long man in the bullpen for Seattle who in the first couple of weeks may be pushed into some spot starting duty with Paul Abbott on the DL with a sore shoulder and Tomko is always itching for the opportunity to prove to Lupinella that he belongs in the rotation full time. The one one to Hernandez a swing and a miss one and two. And there's that breaking ball we were just talking about Dan Ramon Hernandez first time up jumped all over a 95 mile an hour fastball of Freddie Garcia up in the zone. Now testing him with the off speed pitch two curveballs try and spike this ball a little bit here. Dan Wilson definitely a guy you can trust to block the baseball for you. See if Ramon Hernandez will take himself out of his. His offensive groove. Here comes the one two down and away and there's a good stop just as you mentioned by Dan Wilson. It's going to give a pitcher so much confidence when he knows he can throw just about anything anywhere and it won't get by the catcher. Exactly. You stick a curveball down in that situation you know as a pitcher that the catcher's telling you you want this ball in the dirt. You saw Dan Wilson get on his haunches there anticipating and reacting to the ball in the dirt. First and third one out the A's already leading one to nothing here in the fourth inning. And the 2 2 to Hernandez. Line drive, base hit into left field. Long will score. Giambi stops at second, and the A's now lead 2 to nothing. Boy, the development of a young hitter before your eyes, Ramon Hernandez. Two breaking balls. Gets a changeup. Different plane, but stays on it long enough, trying to keep himself in the middle of the ballpark, keeps his hands back, and smokes that change up to left field for an RBI. Big, big hit for the Oakland A's. He has doubled and scored, and now he's got an RBI single as Lou Pinella continues to pace, and Brett Tomko continues to throw in the pen. Here's Johnny Damon. Up and away ball one to the A's new leadoff hitter and left fielder, who's 0 for 2 tonight with a ground out and a pop-up. Coming off a terrific year especially the second half as you mentioned Mike with Kansas City a year ago. Damon doesn't know where he's going to be a year from now but he's not worried about it playing with a team that's definitely got a chance to get it back to the postseason somewhere that Damon's never been. With the temperature dropping into the high 30s the roof is closing here at Safeco. Roof closing for fan comfort is the official <laughs> statement. How about the announcer's comfort? <laughs> we didn't dress for the weather, did we? Swung on and missed. One and two. The count on Damon. Johnny taking himself out of his strengths a little bit now. Getting two balls down in the zone. Swinging over the top of them. Definitely feeling first game jitters in the Oakland Green. We talked about Ichiro's heart pumping as he gets a chance yes. to play in the majors for the first time. For Damon, it's got to be just about as exciting after the Royals were the only thing that he had ever known. Takes it high, two and two. A guy who grew up near there and had really become a, a big factor in the community in Kansas City. Very and much so. Never thought he would have to leave Kansas City. Either. But the economics of the game uh, sometimes dictate that teams like the Royals can't hold on to their players. It was just a bit of a surprise that he wound up with another team that has trouble financially holding on to all of its players. 2-2. Two -two. One of the 
the most beautiful ballparks around. Safeco Field, which opened about a year and a half ago, it will be the site of the All Star game this season. And what a different atmosphere than the old Kingdome was, huh? Oh, <laughs> the mausoleum. <laughs> There were guys in line begging to hit the plunger on that field. <laughs> 95 days until the All-Star game right here in Seattle. 2-2 Two -two to Damon. Up and away, ball three. I don't know that Freddy Garcia is going to get much more of a chance to work this out if he loses Damon. Giambi out at second, Hernandez at first, a run in, only one out. Tomko should be ready if Pinella wants him. Tomko's ready, and you got an unproven hitter and Jose Ortiz on deck. Situation where Art Howe might start the runners in this Johnny Damon contact hitter. Garcia's body language suggesting he's just not real comfortable right now, taking a lot of time. He needs Dan Wilson again. Him, they need him to be their number one guy. They've got Seeley and Halama and Moyer and eventually Abbott behind him. Some of their depth taken away because of injuries to Ryan Anderson and Gilmesh. Exactly the kind of pitch counter ratio that Garcia requires. Huh? Nobody there and he throws it into center field. Now the runner from first is caught. And then he'll get back because Giambi wasn't going anywhere. What a misadventure for both teams. No harm, no foul. Wow. We see Carlos Guillen busting back in. Freddy Garcia sees it and says, well, you stopped. I didn't. Continues with the throw. Mike Cameron hustling in, barehanded. Not a bad play by Jeremy Giambi, not advancing on that. Not risk the situation of taking yourself out of a big inning. And Hernandez fortunate to put the brakes on in time and to get it back to first base. Now the 3 2. And Damon chops it foul. As a catcher, boy, you got to get those wheels started. And once you get those wheels started, <laughs> it's hard to slow them down. <laughs> there was a situation 3 2 changeup to Johnny Damon. Not quite pitching around him to get to Ortiz, but not giving Johnny a ball up out over the plate. Again, the 3 2. Damon lays off. They'll appeal. No swing. And the bases are loaded. And that may be all for Garcia. Lou Pinella making his way out toward the mound. He's got a very deep pen down there if he needs to go to him early. Tomko ready if needed, but not the kind of start that Pinella was hoping for from Freddy Garcia. A 17 game winner two years ago. Nine wins in just over half a season last year because of the leg injury. And Pinella's going to give him a chance to work out of it. Luke going out and telling him exactly what we've talked about time and again. You're one pitch away from getting out of this inning. Give me a good fastball down in the zone. Young kid will chase. Get a ground ball. Use the defense behind you. Double play, and we're back in trying to score some runs. Garcia has already walked five tonight. Look at some of the power numbers that the Yays put up last year, including a major league record of 14 grand slams. The bases are loaded now with only one out for Jose Ortiz, who has flied out and struck out tonight. Again, the appeal, and again, no swing. Garcia continues to fall behind hitter after hitter. And Jason Giambi right now is looming in the on-deck circle behind Ortiz. And that has been the biggest difference between Tim Hudson and Freddie Garcia. 0-1 versus 1-0. Grounded foul left side, a ball to strike. Ortiz, not just some slap hitter who's finding his way to the majors as a second baseman. He hit 351 with 24 homers last year at the AAA level. A whole lot of crooked numbers up there right now for Freddy Garcia. Fortunate in a sense to only be down two. 
Ortiz wouldn't chase. Giambi at third, Hernandez at second, Damon at first, Jason and Giambi on deck. And a hitter's count, two and one on Jose Ortiz. Base hit into center. One run home. Here comes Hernandez. The throw from center is cut. A two-run single for Jose Ortiz and a four-to-nothing Oakland lead. Over well, there you have the Oakland A's. Walk, base hit, stolen base, another walk to Johnny Damon, and then the base hit by Ortiz. And here comes Lou Pinella again to take Garcia out and bring Tomko in. And a less than enviable spot with two on and the AL MVP coming up in Giambi. But Pinella couldn't wait any longer with the Mariners already down to four to nothing here in the fourth inning. We'll step aside for a moment as Tomko comes in to face Giambi. Jose Ortiz with a big two run single, and the A's have doubled their lead. Back in the studio, Royals and the Yankees. Big opening day for Bernie Williams. Couple of nifty plays in the field. Also, hit a two run home run of the ball game. And how about Roger Clemens? Joe Randa in the ninth. 3,509 strikeouts for Clemens, number one all time in the American League. And the Yankees beat Casey in seven three. Passed a fellow by the name of Walter Johnson to set that American League record. Freddie Garcia out of the game here. Brett Tomko in to face Jason Giambi. With two on, only one out, three runs in already in a four to nothing Oakland lead. Tomko has been a starter. He's been a reliever. He's in the pen right now. He may start a little with Paul Abbott on the DL. He could very well have been traded had the Mariners not come down with some pitching injuries. Gil Mesh, Ryan Anderson. Anderson definitely out for the season to mesh out until at least after the All-Star break. But there aren't too many teams with excess depth in pitching. And at some point, Seattle might become one of them. And there will be a lot of teams knocking on Pat Gillick's door. Outstanding bullpen of the Seattle Mariners. Used to be, like you said, Dan, their weakness. Now their strength. Paniagua, Rhodes, Sasaki, just outstanding arms. 2-0 down and in ball three. You got a glimpse of Jeff Nelson, who has come back to Seattle after five years with New York. And Sasaki here had 37 saves on his way to the American League Rookie of the Year award last year. But they've got bigger problems on their hands right now. Two on, and Tomko has not exactly come out of the bullpen firing strikes. 3-0 to Giambi. Taking all the way, it looked like. He will. Along the same lines of Mark McGuire. Never swings at a 3-0 count. How about 3-1? 3-1. 3-1 will be lift and separate. <laughs> there it comes from Tomko. Didn't have a chance. Another walk. The sixth given up by Seattle pitching tonight. And the bases are loaded again, this time for Olmedo Sides. with that big double. Somehow, sometime, you're going to have to pitch Jason Giambi, especially if Olmedo signs continues to swing the bat exceptionally well. But another situation where a ground ball gets you out of this inning, minimizes the damage, get your team in there, try and get more than one hit that the Mariners have on the board right now. Signs trying to show Art Howe, as you mentioned, that even when John Jaha comes back from his shoulder problems, that he's got to be in the lineup somewhere. Whether it's just against lefties, more than that, DH, third base, who knows? Down and away ball two, two and oh. The A's have had favorable counts all night long. And now Tomko is going to get a visit. Brian Price, the pitching coach, is on his way out. First pitch, strike one, then you expand the strike zones. What Tim Hudson has done the first three innings against the Mariners. But like you said, Freddie Garcia, 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, 3-1. Pitch after pitch. What it does, Dan, it gets your hint fielders on their heels a little bit, not on their toes, kind of picking around at the ground. Going at him, pitching behind an account, just plays right into the Oakland A's advantage. 
Well, on the heels of yesterday's Sunday night debut from Puerto Rico this coming Sunday, John and Joe and the gang will be at Chavez Ravine in L.A. as Barry Bonds and the Giants take on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Sunday night of baseball presented by Nextel, one of the best rivalries in all of baseball. The Giants and the Dodgers Sunday at 8 Eastern to 5 Pacific time. And if you can't get yourself to a TV, don't forget nationwide coverage on ESPN Radio as well. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Both Western divisions, American League and National League, appear to be wide open. Three, maybe four teams in each division who could contend. Boy, this is a mile-high pop-up in the middle of the diamond off the bat of signs for the second out of the inning. That snaps a streak of six consecutive Oakland batters who had reached base. 2-0 count. Olmedo signs expanding his strike zone. Goes after a ball up. Brett Tomko getting very beneficial pop fly on the infield. Now Eric Chavez walked in the second, struck out of the third. One of the young players, the A's have locked up to multi-year deals. Tim Hudson's in that group. Miguel Tejada's in that group. First pitch swinging, he fouls it off. Of course, Jason Giambi, as we mentioned briefly earlier, is the biggest concern to the Oakland A's right now. Will they be able to sign their heart and soul and keep the reigning MVP in Oakland for many, many years to come? They want to. He wants to. The snag is the no trade clause. And even Art Howe got an extension after working really on one year deals for a while. He's well deserved. Got, yeah. Down low, a ball and a strike. Art Howe, a manager not afraid to delegate authority, trust each of his coaches to do their job, trust input from his players. 1 1 to Chavez. And Tomko misses again a ball, too. We mentioned that the roof has closed recently. The temperature is now down into the high 30s. How tough is that for pitchers? Well, coming out of the bullpen, it's nice and cozy down there. You've got the heater going, hands in the pockets. As long as you're allowed to blow in your hand, you get the moisture on the fingertips and have a decent grip on the ball. High fly ball over the world, foul territory down the right field line. And for those of you who may be somewhat unfamiliar with this stadium, yes, the roof is closed, but there's still open air coming in because it doesn't close completely. If you look out at left field and right center field, open areas around the scoreboard and above the seats out in left field, and it is still pretty chilly in this ballpark even though they have closed the roof above us still feel the wind coming in and swirling imagine a carport <laughs> they look cozy you're imagining another coffee I know you yes. You finished <laughs> off that big one pretty quickly earlier and Wilson can't find it and now gets a little bit of help from Tomko three and two with the bases loaded and two outs Danny Wilson coming back Worked very hard in the offseason, getting stronger. Look at the agility and the speed of the reflexes of Dan Wilson. That ball has no business being blocked. What a great effort by Dan Wilson, exploding to the point of impact and smothering the ball. He didn't see the ball come off and hit his arm like it hit a two by four, killed the ball in front. A chance for Chavez and the A's to blow it wide open here if he can do some damage. 3-2. Swing and a miss, and Tomko gets him to win the inning. The A's leave the bases loaded, but they score three times and knock Garcia out of the game to take a 4-0 lead over the Mariners. We are back at Safeco Field, where we have been told that the gentleman on the right of your screen just dropped $500 on Ichiro merchandise. They cannot keep it in the stores. They have not sold merchandise, jerseys, whatever, this quickly for anybody before. Randy Johnson, Kenny Griffey, Alex Rodriguez. Ichiro Suzuki has become a huge star on both sides of the Pacific. I don't know what all that says, but I assume I it's flattering. Yeah, I tell you what, <laughs> it's uh, the weight of the world on your shoulders for the young man. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Here's Brett Boone to lead off the bottom of the fourth. 4-0 the A's leading the Mariners. 
did you see where in spring training the Mariners issued 75 media passes to North American media to cover them and 166 passes to members of the Japanese press. So the poor kid is on a one of the backfield stretching and there are 12 to 15 cameras photographers watching and filming him stretch. 2-0 pitch fouled off. This game tonight is being broadcast live on television, on high-definition television, and on radio back to Japan. Those yeah. gentlemen are from the Tokyo Broadcasting yeah. System. Let's listen in. Yeah. サンディーセンはファウル。しかしあのメジャーリーグデビューはこのシアトルだったんですね。ですからまあ復帰と言いましょうか。戻ってきたんですね。このブームは。そうなんですか。最初があのシアトルだったんですよ。シアトルだったん
We've got a bell and we've got a boon with Seattle right now. Both of the three generation of families in a Major League Baseball are represented right now by the Mariners. Announced in and blocked by Hernandez. One hit, three and a third. That's 20. been effective, though, Dan, yep. getting, getting ahead of the guys. 20 game winner a year ago. Now Martin issued the walk with one out of here in the fourth. David Bell to batter with a count of 1 0. Oh. There's a the strike. One of the more amazing things about Tim Hudson, as young as he is, and relatively speaking, as inexperienced as he is in the majors, is that last year as the A's needed to win virtually every day in August and September to get back into the race. He won his last seven starts of the season with an ERA of 1.16. Won on the last day of the season to give the A's the West Division title which is why he wasn't ready to start a game one of the playoffs. But a guy at the age of 25 who has shown no fear, who has pitched against the best, on the road, in the heat of a pennant race, and almost always come out on top. Runner goes. Rowe is not in time. It was close, but a stolen base for Al Martin. better throw from Ramon Hernandez this time. Tim Hudson had been working him, working Al Martin at first base. Pretty good jump again. Ramon Hernandez explodes out of there. Look at the release, the extension through the zone, doing all that he can do. Awfully, awfully close at second. Second steal tonight for the Mariners. The count is one and two on Bell. Four to nothing Oakland, bottom of the fourth inning. Swing and a miss at Hudson. Comes up with another strikeout, his fourth. The final game here on opening day, presented by the Home Depot, comes your way from Safeco Field in Seattle. Dan Schulman and Mike McFarland with you. We've got maybe the top two teams in the American League West, although this division appears to be up for grabs to a certain extent, but the A's considered by many to be the favorites. The Mariners try to bounce back from the departure of Alex Rodriguez. They've got Ichiro Suzuki now, and trying to find their way into the postseason again and what a way for these two teams to begin the regular season playing against one another. Dan Wilson the batter. The A's got a one in the third and then three in the fourth when they knocked out Seattle starter Freddie Garcia. And now the Mariners who have just one lonely single off Tim Hudson tonight are trying to scratch a run across and start getting back into this game. Very chilly night here in Seattle. They closed the roof a little while ago. We talked about some of the impact that Ichiro has had on Seattle. He's also expanded the cuisine here at Safeco Field. Guy needed a shovel. 0-1 <laughs> oh the count on Dan Wilson, who's 0-4-1 tonight. A ground ball to third, his first time up. Hudson misses low, a ball and a strike. traditions in Oakland as the starting pitcher has the choice of which jersey to wear. Tim Hudson notorious for the dark green jerseys rather than the standard gray on the road. Where's the green at home as well. It's not like a ball player to be superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> One and two now the count on Wilson. Hudson and Barry Zito and a big left-hander Mark Mulder. A healthy Mark yeah. Mulder. Gil Heredia in there and Art Howe has Corey Lytle on the way to becoming his fifth starter. They don't need him for a couple of weeks. Fairly deep bullpen as well. One two pitch jammed a little looper back at first it'll drop in a fair ball. Here comes Martin to the plate and he will score without a throw as the Mariners get on the board.
Tim Hudson switching up from the fork ball to strike Dan Wilson out. Going with a fastball, trying to sneak one by him. Balls that are down in the strike zone do not get flared in. Dan Wilson fights this ball up and in, off to the right side. Not a bad pitch. The location was just not where Tim Hudson wanted it to be. The A's lead has been cut to three at four to one. Wilson at first two down and here's Carlos Gee in the Seattle shortstop who struck out his first time up. Switch hitter little chopper out in front of the mound Hudson very quickly to pick it up and to make the play and end the inning. And he gives up a walk a stolen base after that then a base hit to bring home a run 4-1 Oakland leading Seattle at the end of four. Back in Chile, Seattle, temperature in the high 30s. The A's lead the Mariners 4-1 and moving to the fifth here on opening day. Capacity crowd are very close to it here at Safeco Field. Miguel Tejada leading off the fifth and taking down and away from Brett Tomko into his second inning of work in relief of Freddy Garcia. Garcia's line winds up four earned runs on five hits and five walks in three and a third. Swung on and it popped in the air, shallow left. In comes Martin to make the catch for the first down as we send you back to Bill Pito. Dan, thank you very much. We have the White Sox earlier today and the Indians. David Wells debuting for the White Sox, up 6-1. Juan Gonzalez, first game as a member of the Indians. Homered there in the bottom of the sixth, and he homered in the bottom of the eighth. Not enough, though. David Wells a win. White Sox beat Cleveland 7-4. Uh, two of the more significant personnel moves in the offseason and coming into play in that game with Juan Gonzalez hitting a couple of homers and David Wells fronting the Chicago rotation and pitching very well. It figures to be quite a battle all season long between Chicago and Cleveland. And again, those teams will play each other six more times than they did last year, just like New York and Boston will, just like Oakland and Seattle will as divisional play gets re-emphasized again in the American League for the first time, really since 1976 when Seattle and Toronto came into the American League and changed it from 12 teams to 14 teams as long can't hold up on this way that changed things and all of a sudden the whole notion of playing your own division more than the other division that disappeared well, I think it's good you can start get more pressure especially early on you start to see these big games early on in the season and continuing through the season whereas before it'd be over at the all-star break you know, we mentioned earlier a team like Oakland they'll play their first 19 games of the season against teams within their own division then again in June and July they'll have another big stretch within their own division and then again in September it's automatic Two outs, nobody on for Jeremy Giambi. A strikeout and a walk tonight for Giambi. There will still be some oddities if you play in a division with an odd number of teams. For instance, Kansas City playing New York right now. They'll play them again in a couple of weeks, and then they'll be done with each other. So the not, whole year, yeah. yes. There are those especially who follow teams that compete in the West who say well it's great for divisional play but it's not so good for the wild card because everybody's playing a different schedule and a lot of people feel the AL West and the NL West are the two strongest deepest divisions so you're playing tougher teams within your own division and in interleague play than say teams in the central divisions are playing. Valid point. Taken for a strike two and two. Tomko looking for a one two three inning here in the fifth Giambi with a fly ball into center it'll drop in front of Cameron who didn't look like he got a good jump on that ball at all probably one of those knucklers ball got in on Jeremy a little bit and Mike was trying to read whether or not it was over his head floated in and dropped. A look at the Home Depot in-game box for the Oakland A's and look at the guy down at the bottom the catcher Ramon Hernandez he has doubled single scored twice driven in a run and here he is right now with two outs and a runner at first it's been a big night to start off the season for Ramon Hernandez.
And I don't know that outside the Bay Area, really anybody knows much about Ramon Hernandez. Well, they, they, they understand and they saw him uh, throughout the year that he's a kid that's growing up with this organization. And A.J. Hinch and Ramon Hernandez were the two upcoming stars for the Oakland A's at the catching position. A.J. Hinch now at the Kansas City Royals, but Ramon won it out offensively and learned on the job last year. And when you learn on the job and you take them to the playoffs, it's a job well done. He hits the ball well again, but this time it'll carry all the way to Cameron in center field to end the inning. It's 4-1 Oakland. Ichiro will lead off the bottom of the fifth when we come back to Seattle. ESPN 2's Major League Baseball Opening Day, presented by Home Depot, is brought to you by Holiday Inn, who gives you more, and more is better. And by Nortel Networks. We're building the new high-performance internet. Another big ovation for new Mariner Ichiro Suzuki. Coming up for the third time, he's granted out already twice tonight, the seven-time batting champ in Japan. A very big spring hitting well, well over 300 for the Mariners. Everybody who has seen him says he's got a ton of ability as Hudson starts him with a strike. A guy who predominantly hits the ball the other way, and the A's do have him shaded the other way to a certain extent. And they've got Eric Chavez way in on the grass at third, although we're told that Ichiro, despite his speed, is not really a guy who tries to drop a bunt down for a base hit very often at all. No, but what he does is use the whole ballpark, and when he hits a ball deep to the shortstop, where the shortstop has to backhand it or in the hole. He has a chance of beating it out every time with his exceptional speed. The scouts also say he's got a terrific arm. He's a very good defensive outfielder. He has won the equivalent of seven gold gloves in Japan. Lupinell has wanted him to turn on the ball a little bit more. Let's see you pull it. Let's see you show some pop. And there you see he tried to yank it to right field and wound up missing it entirely two and two. One of those front foot hitters, very handsy hitter. Oakland A's are going to attack him down out of the strike zone away. Likes to get out of the box in such a hurry. Off speeds right there. Ichiro now 0 for 3. Going into this, the, talking with Ramon Hernandez, they were going to attack Suzuki away hard and soft. Here's that nasty fork ball from Tim Hudson. I'll tell you what, I don't care where you're from, that ball is unhittable. Hudson picks up his fifth strike out of the night. Blowing on his hand to try and stay warm here on the cool night. And facing a guy who's given him some problems tonight in Mike Cameron. And Cameron, we were talking about earlier, about how he's not really your typical number two hitter, not all that disciplined, doesn't take a lot of pitches. Well, they must have had our feet piped into the clubhouse because tonight he's walked twice. He's fouled off a number of pitches. He saw 15 pitches in his first two plate appearances. He has, and, and coming out of spring training, feeling very good, very comfortable. Great round of batting practice, emphasizing going the other way, keeping his hands inside the ball. You know, hit 300 in spring, allowing himself to get deeper in the count and trusting his ability to get there and doing some damage when he is behind in the count. Right at the knees, and it's one and two on Cameron. And Tim Hudson isn't exactly a guy you want to go up there and get deep in the count knowing that that fork ball's in his arsenal. You want to get the first fastball you see and put it in play, so he's shown some restraint tonight in this number two hole. Hudson's just not leaving anything up at all against the Seattle hitters. Here comes the one-two, and it's off the end of the bat foul. And with the slider on that pitch. Fastball, fork ball, change up slider, throwing them all for a strike. Two hits, one run. And again, the one two on the way to Mike Cameron. Down and in. When a pitcher has the ability to do a couple things throw strikes with all his pitches and the ability to throw off speed pitches in fastball counts. That's what Tim Hudson can do and everything comes out of the same arm slot making him so very effective. Just missing it's three and two and other than some occasional problems finding the strike zone 
The Mariners haven't been able to do anything at all. Edgar Martinez had a single in the first inning, and Dan Wilson had a bloop RBI single in the fourth inning. Those are the only two hits for Seattle tonight. Three two. Upstairs, and Cameron walks for the third time tonight. the most dangerous hitter that Seattle has with Cameron at first and one out in the fifth inning. D.H. Edgar Martinez, a base hit and a walk for Martinez tonight. Getting better with age. And Edgar Chant now reverberating around the building. Cameron with a big lead. He's already got a stolen base here tonight. Lou Finella has talked about having to do the stolen base and the hit and run and funning, sacrificing, manufacturing runs. Attacking the fact that Tim Hudson likes to throw those off-speed pitches and fastball counts, and they've guessed right twice. Going. The A's guess that he is and guess wrong. Crowd boos. They should be cheering. Now Edgar's got a hitter's count on. Exactly. And now it's a game of pitching to your lead. You have a three run lead. Ramon Hernandez just made a nice throw on the last steal attempt. Give Tim Hudson a slide step. Give him some chance. Throw over, but pitching out to get behind a batter like Edgar Martinez, you might have to question that. Gets away from Hernandez. It's 2 0. No matter how you slice the numbers, Edgar Martinez, one of the very best hitters that the game has seen in the last 10 years or so. 320 or better each of the last six years, the only active major leaguer who can say that. Two time batting champ. Takes a strike two and one. And somewhat surprisingly, I guess, until you think about all the turnover in baseball these days, among American League players, the only guy who has spent a longer career with one team right now is Cal Ripken. Cal Ripken. Otherwise, it's Yediker who goes back to 1987 with the Seattle Mariners. Two and one, runner not going, and Martinez takes ball three. Never comes out of his game plan or his approach. Rarely do you see him chase an off-speed pitch. Always on balance, hands in position to attack the baseball. And among all the Seattle hitters, he seems to have been affected the least by the switch from the Kingdom to this part. He's still finding the gaps. He's still hitting for a good average. It's because he doesn't change his approach. Regardless of the field, regardless of the pitcher. Better with age. And he's going to play at least a couple of more years. Signed a, an extension recently with Seattle. He got such a late start, relatively speaking, as a major leaguer that he may not have the kinds of numbers that jump out at you as, as Hall of Fame numbers. But two or three more good years, he'll start getting some support. Runner goes, and it's a base hit into right center for Martinez. Cameron is on his way to third as the ball is cut. And he'll stop there. Edgar is two for two. Well, Tim Hudson got behind with the 0-0 pitch out and then gets a fastball up in the zone. Edgar Martinez not trying to do too much with it. Smokes it into right center field. First and third situation. First ball hit hard Tim, from Tim Hudson. Haven't seen too many balls up in the strike zone, but with a hitter of Edgar Martinez, he knows what to do with it. Pitching coach Rick Peterson to the mound for the first time tonight to talk with his young ace. The A's have a four to one lead, but it's in jeopardy here in the bottom of the fifth. 
Dana DeMuth is going out to break up the conversation with John Olderud waiting at the plate. Rick Peterson just out there trying to calm him down a little bit, get him back in his game plan. Nobody up for the Oakland A's in the bullpen. Just the third hit of the night for the Mariners, two of them belonging to Edgar Martinez. John Olerud, fly ball to center field in the first, struck out in the third. Tim Hudson up to 84 pitches now on a very cool night. Let's see Art House starting to get that good athletic bullpen. Jeff Tam, Jim Masir, one of those guys up to stem the tide here at the bottom of the fifth. First and third, one down. John Olerud, the batter. Hudson works. And he went around 0-1 on Olerud. Jeremy Giambia, just before that pitch was thrown, started off on a dead sprint over towards center field, apparently having received some kind of instruction on where to play Olerud, and then he stopped and ran back the other way. Dazed and confused <laughs> in right field. Playing, playing him slide opposite, straight up in right field. Check swing foul. Well, very few hitters in a baseball use the entire field as much as John Olerud. Year after year, if you see a breakdown of his hits, it's almost exactly a third to left, a third to center, a third to right. Yeah, they cannot position this guy. And you said it, Dan. During those years when he was hitting 350, 360, it was like there were no outfielders. The guy had holes anywhere he wanted to put the ball. And it wasn't like he was flaring balls. He was smoking every single hit. Hudson out in front, 0 and 2. Now, the year that John Olerud hit 363 for Toronto back in 1993, he had 54 doubles. And as we were mentioning when we were talking before the game, it's not like he was stretching singles into doubles. He wasn't legging any of them out. He was hitting the ball up the alley all night long, knocking the walls down. Jeff Montgomery, the great Royals closer, threw him a knuckleball. Had no success getting him out, threw him a knuckleball. John Olerud smoked that for a double in the gap. Activity now beginning in the Oakland pen. Hudson with the lead here in the bottom of the fifth. Bounces one in, Hernandez blocks it. There's T.J. Matthews and Mark Guthrie up in the pen for our half. Possibilities, what Seattle has coming up, what he's got down in the bullpen. And, and Tim Hudson, one pitch away from getting out of this inning. One, two, and Holabrook takes it low. He's always had a very good eye. Each of the last nine years, Holabrook has walked more than he struck out every single year. If only he could calm down a little. <laughs> Have you ever met a guy? And I get Edgar More Martinez is another guy yes. like that. Very even keel. The old adage never knew if he went 0 for 4 or 4 for 4 applies to John Olerud. From 0 and 2 to 2 and 2. Hudson checks the runners. Out of the plate. Olerud checks the swing after the appeal. And it's three and two. And Hudson mumbling under his breath. They had John Olerud chasing at a fork ball the last time up. Tried to get him again. John Olerud, veteran hitter, staying back and reading it. Mike Cameron, the runner at third. Edgar Martinez at first. The pitch count now climbing rapidly for Tim Hudson. And the 3 2 pitch is low ball four to load him up. It's the sixth walk given up by Tim Hudson tonight. And you talk about pitching to your lead. Three run lead. Now you have the bases loaded with Brett Boone up. A situation where the Mariners could bust out a big inning here. 
This is a situation where Tim Hudson has to attack John Olin through four straight off speed pitches, trying to get him to chase, going for the strike zone, strikeout, rather than letting him try and put it in play. But good sinking fastball down in the zone for the double play. Boone's numbers from a year ago with San Diego. He's 0 for 2 here tonight. Hudson works. It's swung on and grounded foul up the third base line. Boone hitting in the number five spot in the Seattle lineup. And uh, again, not to belabor the point, but you think back a couple of years ago, and probably Edgar Martinez was hitting in the five spot. You had Griffey and Alex Rodriguez in the lineup as well. You had a healthy Jay Buhner hitting sixth. Right. Buhner may be back in a month or six weeks. He's got a strained arch, hoping to come back. Fouled off again, 0 and 2. Seattle desperately needs players like Brett Boone and Al Martin, who's on deck to meet or exceed the kind of seasons they have had in the past and give Lou Pinella somebody else to depend upon other than Edgar Martinez. The 0 2 in the air right field pretty deep backing up Jeremy Giambi. Tagging is Cameron. The throw will come in towards second base, and it's four to two. A nice at bat by Brett Boone. No ball, two strike count. Tim Hudson trying to bounce a fork ball, but leaves it up just a little bit. Brett Boone sticking his face down in there, getting the barrel on it for a sacrifice fly. One of those productive outs we've talked about, Dan. And the Mariners back within two, still with two on after the RBI for Boone. And the batter was Al Martin, who grounded out in the second, walked, stole the base, and scored in the fourth. It's fouled off. Martin with Seattle last year hit only 231 in the last couple of months of the season. But prior to that, most of his years with Pittsburgh, he has proven himself to be a much better hitter than those numbers. Oh, indicate. very, very professional hitter. And that's why the Seattle Mariners know that. And he may eventually work himself into a platoon with Buner if Buner can come back healthy. All kinds of rumors around Seattle in the last month that the Mariners are looking for another big bat. More often than not, third base or left field were the two positions that you heard. A healthy Buhner would go a long way toward solidifying left field, but you heard names like John Vanderwall, Jose Cruz. Pat Gillick, the GM for the Mariners, has uh, never been gun shy about going about out and pulling swinging the a deal. trigger. Yeah. Exactly. The architect of the World Series teams with Toronto, then a stint in Baltimore, now Seattle. Martinez at second, Ola Root at first. Two down in the inning. And the 0-2 to Martin. Very high. Ironically, in his early days with the Blue Jays, in the mid to late 80s, Gillick was known as Stand Pack because Stand. he didn't swing a lot of deals. But he got over that uh, just about the time the Blue Jays started winning World Series. 1-2 pitch, bounced in and blocked by Hernandez. Both catchers have been awfully busy doing that tonight. Two guys that work down in the zone. Tim Hudson is very difficult to block, and he counts on that fact. Dan Wilson did a great job with Freddie Garcia, but Tim Hudson stuff, you got to anticipate and expect that that fork ball, when you stick it down, you're on the gun knowing that that ball's going to be in the dirt because that's the pitch he goes for the strikeout with. He rarely leaves it up. Martin battling it two and two. Down to first. Gian to the big bounce to make the play unassisted and end the inning. The Mariners get a run, leave a couple, and through five, trail Oakland four to two. The A's have a 4-2 lead on the Mariners moving to the sixth inning here at Safeco Field in Seattle. Every Sunday, it's Baseball Today right here on ESPN2. Rich Eisen and others have all the week's stories, highlights, as well as live reports from select games right until first pitch at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Start your baseball week off right with Baseball Today every Sunday on ESPN2. 
Top of the order for the A's here in the sixth inning. Johnny Damon, Jose Ortiz, and a Jason Giambi facing Brett Tomko. Damon in his first regular season game as a member of the A's is grounded out, popped up, and walked. 327 last year, 46 steals. Molaru to a knee to make the play. Back to the studio. Here's Bill Pito. And thank you, Rafael, for call of Atlanta today. Four RBIs. This home run breaks a 4-4 tie in the seventh. And the Braves go on to win their season opener. 10 to 4. Easy win today at Cincinnati. Got to look at new look Synergy Field there in Cincinnati. Having to make all kinds of changes to that ballpark with the new park on the way in a couple of years. They've got a well, I guess the Cincinnati version of the Green Monster the out in center monster. field. Yeah. 40 feet high. And natural grass in Cincinnati this year. Barry Larkin is happy as Ortiz goes around 0-2. Yeah, he, he offered to finance half of it. <laughs> didn't have to do that. Ortiz tonight, one for three, had a big two-run single. His last time up in Oakland's three-run fourth inning. So far, the big hit of the game. Two and two. It's Ortiz and Ramon Hernandez, two somewhat unlikely candidates given some of the other hitters in this Oakland lineup who have been the biggest offensive stars here tonight. Well, we're pitching around that guy all night long. Ortiz hits it hard, center field. Cameron back, runs it down on the track. That ball was hit almost 400 feet. This ball is caught due to the jump by Mike Cameron on this ball. Ortiz showing some of that power that he's demonstrated that everybody loves so much. Mike Cameron, very underrated outfielder. With Suzuki out there now, you've got some speed to cover some of these big, big gaps here at Safeco Field. Great jump, great catch. Two outs in the inning, and here's Giambi. There is maybe our first true clear example in this game of the high strike being called. Right under Jason Giambi's armpits, borderline height. Dan Wilson pulls it down a little bit. There are some pitchers who just won't even try to throw the ball up there, and, and Tim Hudson's one of them. We haven't seen. Yeah, you don't want to uh, ask a pitcher to do something that he's not best at doing. You yep. don't want Tim Hudson elevating unless it's for effect. But to try and get a guy to elevate to throw strikes, not something that you're trying to do. No swing on the appeal. One and two on Giambi. But it will be interesting to see how it affects this Oakland A's team. So all of a sudden, you start calling a bigger strike zone on a team that prides itself on being very patient. Start taking the A's out of their game plan. Tom Go working quickly. Here's the one, two, down and away. And that's why you've seen the Oakland A's. Although it's only four runs, they've had opportunities every inning by getting runners on, working the count. Saw Freddie Garcia's pitch count get elevated in a hurry. Brett Tomko's done a good job, though, coming in, stemming the tide. The A's have left eight on for the first five innings. Giambi is gone. Tomko has changed this game around. The high, hard one past Giambi and onto the bottom of the six with Oakland leading Seattle 4-2. T.J. Matthews on in relief for the Oakland A's here in the sixth inning. The highest ERA among all regular American League relievers last year, but he was coming off elbow surgery the previous winter. He has lost weight. He's a year removed from surgery. He had a great spring, and the A's are confident he's going to be the pitcher he was before the surgery. Yeah, he was still recovering from that surgery last year. Didn't have the snap on his slider. The explosiveness of his fastball, but talking to the guys, seems that the fastball's back this year. Foul to back by David Bell to begin the bottom of the sixth with the A's leading the Mariners 4-2. Tim
Tim Hudson, the starter for the A's, goes five innings, gives up two runs on three hits, walks six, and strikes out five. Matthews, one of the middlemen for the A's. They've got a couple of very effective right-handed setup relievers in Jim Messier and Jeff Tan, who might be one of the most underrated relievers in baseball. Yeah, right both now. of those guys. No one's heard, heard of them. Messier came onto the scene here with the Oakland A's and was just dominant. Really was the bridge to get to Jason Isringhausen, the closer. The game face uh, on display for Matthews here tonight as he jumps out in front of Bell 0-2. Surprising to see Freddie Garcia go three and a third, Tim Hudson to go five, but both struggled mightily to find the strike zone tonight as Bell fouls it off. The two starters combining for 11 walks in this game. Two young pitchers, opening day assignments, juices are flowing. A little bit out of rhythm, out of sorts. Why do you get the feeling that in September they'll face each other again yeah, with uh, good chance a lot on the line? Good chance. The 0 2. Swing and a miss, and a bell is gone. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. And for the most extensive coverage of Major League Baseball, log on to MLB.com. One down in the bottom of the sixth. Dan Schulman and Mike McFarland with you in Seattle. It's the A's four and the M's two. Dan Wilson, the batter. Loop single for an RBI back in the fourth inning. At the knees for a called strike. Ballparks like that apartment you had when you were in college near the railroad tracks. And when you first move in, all you hear is the train at four in the morning. <laughs> but a couple of weeks later, you don't even notice it anymore. Didn't hold up on the swing, and it's 0-2 on a Wilson. TJ Matthews with a good hard two-seamer to strike out. David Bell on the inside corner. A little snappy slider there to Dan Wilson. Can't hold up on it. Really feeling comfortable about getting out on the mound this year. Went through a very tough physical and emotional season last year. One ball and two strikes to count on Wilson. I think we who have never played professional sports and never had a any kind of surgery take it for granted that when somebody comes back from surgery that happened in the offseason, they should be 100%. And more often than not, that's just not the case. And sometimes they need a full year and then some to, to rest and rehab and get back to where they were. We battle all the demons that come along with that. Start doubting yourself. Am I ever going to get back to, to where I was before? Is it going to blow out again? Am I going to have more problems with it? And boy, it just doesn't seem like I'm throwing as hard as I used to. Let me try and throw harder. A lot of baggage coming along. Comes along in those circumstances. Matthews doesn't like anything that Ramon Hernandez has to offer right now. Now he's settled on a sign. 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss, and a back-to-back -back strikeouts for Matthews here in the sixth. We're seeing a couple strengths from the, both of these ball clubs. We talked about the strength of the Seattle Mariners fan, Brett Tomko. Doing a great job so far. Here's that slider from T.J. Matthews. Excellent location, down and away. All set up by the power sinker of, of Matthews. Getting that front shoulder of Dan Williams to pull off a little bit and then throw the slider on the outside corner. Great sequence from Ramon Hernandez. Two outs in the inning. Nobody on it here. Shortstop Carlos Guillen, who has struck out and grounded out tonight. And on the grass at third is Chavez as Guillen takes ball one. Starting to see the breath on the players out on the field. T.J. Matthews blowing in his hand. Big puff of smoke coming out. 
You said 39 a while ago. I guarantee you it's dropped. <laughs> it's a little south of that now. <laughs> the rumor was it was up in the mid-50s earlier today, but we'll dispute that as Gian lifts a high fly ball right center field. Terrence Long has room, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for T.J. Matthews. Here in the bottom of the six, it remains the A's four and the Mariners two. Seventh inning in Seattle, A's four and the Mariners two. Brett Tomko still on the mound for Seattle. Olmedo Signs will lead off the inning and look at a strike. Signs the D.H. for the A's here tonight. A one for three, RBI double back in the third inning. Of signs perhaps being pushed to the bench. Jaha coming back. Adam Pyatt, the platoon player. And even on the bench, Art Howe's got a lot of thunder. Excellent pinch hitter in Olmedo Signs. Goes up there with the theory. First straight thing I see, I'm hammering it. If I miss it, well, at least I know I'm loose for the next pitch coming in. <laughs> it's such a carefree bunch. It's all fun. There's no fear of failure. It's all having fun for these days. It never has been. And that's one of the things they're talking about this year. They're expected to win this division, and they know it. No thought, no concerns about being tense. Fly ball, left center, Cameron over, one down. And Jason Giambi won't allow that to happen. It's a carefree, loose atmosphere in that clubhouse. Up until game time. Once game time starts and they go out there in between the white right lines, they got the game faces on and they're going to war. And they're not out to win. They're out to stomp somebody and make an impression that'll carry over to the next night. A guy who's had a little bit of fun in his playing days, Norm Charlton, is back with the Mariners again. His third stint with Seattle. He's warming up in the pen. Eric Chavez takes a strike. And perhaps the last guy to make the team. Paul Abbott put on the DL. And instead of choosing between Charlton and another reliever, a righty Ryan Franklin, the Mariners kept them both. Nice ovation for Norm when he came in tonight. And remembering all he's done for this organization. Pitching coach apparently overhauled Charlton's mechanics about a month ago after he'd gotten whacked a couple of times in the spring. And Charlton started from scratch and had a good spring. The numbers were good enough to keep him on the team. Slow bouncing ball out towards second. Chavez retired, two down. How about well, Brett Tomko? I was just going to say, yeah. let's say something about Brett Tomko. Going into the playoffs last year, Two and two and two thirds innings, scoreless relief and extra innings against the Chicago White Sox. Coming in tonight, doing the same exact job, keeping his team in this ball game, giving them a chance to come out offensively and try and win the ball game for him. It's just been fantastic since coming in for Freddie Garcia. Three and a third shutout innings for Tomko. He's retired six in a row right now, and he starts Tejada with a strike. Great rhythm, good tempo out on the mound. Strike one. Expanding the zone, throwing strikes. Rip to third, caught by Bell, and the inning is over. Seventh inning stretch, top of the order. Ichiro coming up for the Mariners, who are down by two. Right fielder Ichiro. Also known as Ichiro Suzuki, but wearing just his first name on the back of his uniform. Comes up, he's 0 for 3 tonight. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Big time numbers. His seventh consecutive batting title in Japan last year. As he takes outside from T.J. Matthews, ball one. I don't see too many mics on the back no. of the jerseys now. <laughs> well, the story goes apparently that some years ago, there were four Suzuki's on his team. So he went Ichiro to differentiate One himself. of the things the Seattle Mariners were concerned about was the ability to catch up to the fastballs of the American pitchers in the American League. Look at back in the, over in Japan, had a little bit bigger leg kick to get loaded on the backside. Now they're trying to shorten him up. Watch the difference at the point of contact. Now here, going straight towards the ball, coming off the backside, leaking forward. But boy, look at the head down on the ball. Great hands. One of the things they like about him is his ability to get out of the box in such a hurry. The slow rollers beats it out to first base. 
shortening up that leg kick, allowing him to drive through the ball quicker. Up the middle, base hit into center field. the backside there we go again driving through the ball keeping his hands inside working the middle of the field hitting the ball on the ground and using that great speed and yes if that number 51 looks familiar it was the number that Randy Johnson wore when he was a Mariner nobody had worn it since so it went from being on a 6'10 pitcher to being on a 5'9 outfielder Suzuki about 5'9 160 pounds here we we talked about it. Watch the slow leg kick, which gets him loaded on this backside to catch up with the fastball. Notice how his weight transfers forward so quick. Head directly down, contact staying through the ball. The back foot, look at how quick he's out of the box and on the move. Knowing that ball's up the middle, taking the correct path around the base. Think Looks they're a little cold? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe for their it's sake, they're exactly, not. Exactly, yeah. Well, don't know what they've been partaking in tonight. First hit for the first Japanese position player in the majors, Ichiro Suzuki. <laughs> Lead-off man aboard in the seventh, 4-2 to two Oakland. Ichiro runs well at 21 steals a year ago. Mike Cameron, the batter, he's walked three times. Runner now to going. And Cameron, very patient tonight. Takes ball one. Getting into the meat of the Seattle lineup as well with Edgar Martinez on deck. Steals in nine seasons in Japan. So this is another weapon that Ichiro brings to the ballpark. Two and zero oh on Cam. Time for Lou Pinnell to put something on. Free and Ed, free Mike Cameron up a little bit. Clear his mind. Go ahead and take a swing at something here on a hit and run. Edgar Martinez, John Olerud, big boys coming up behind you. Chiro held by Giambi. Inside ball three. This is as noisy as this building has been in a long time. He got it started with a base hit. And he's a little bit nervous right now. It was 4-0 open at one point. There's a strike taken 3-1. and one. But a run in the fourth, a run in the fifth, and now a threat here in the seventh for Seattle. Great discipline by Mike tonight. 3-1 count. That deserves a chance to take a hack at a ball here. T.J. Matthews has to come in with a good pitch this situation. Runner goes. Fouled off. You saw Jim Nasir, Mark Guthrie, both of whom look ready down in the Oakland pen. The Seattle lineup Starting with the next batter, Martinez goes back and forth. Martinez a righty, Ola Root a lefty, Green a righty, Martin a lefty. So Art Howe's got some tough decisions to make. He does. Coming off the bench, you have Tom Lampkin to come in and face a right-handed pitcher. Charles Gibson, you got two switch hitters, and Macklemore and Stan Javier. Well, Lou Pinnell has got some counter offensive to use against the bullpen of the Oakland A's. Diving back in is Ichiro. Start to set things up left, right, left, right. When you have switch hitters on the bench, both of them contact hitters, both of them that have been around a while.
Runner was on the move three and one. Let's see if he's going again. Should be on three and two. He's off. And it's ball four to Cameron, who remarkably has drawn his fourth walk of the night. Let's go back to Bill Pito. Dan, thank you very much. What a debut for Mike Hampton as a Colorado Rocky at Coors Field, no less, against the Cards. Eight and a third. Gives up five hits. Doesn't give up a run. And Larry Walker, a two-run home run. All Rockies today in Colorado. The final score over St. Louis, eight nothing. Well, if anybody can get it done out there, Mike Hampton is the guy. T.J. Matthews is gone here. Jim Messier's coming in. The athletic lead in jeopardy right now with the lumber coming up. Well, now they're all covered up. Now it's cold. But they're still pumped because their man, Ichiro, is out at second base. Mike Cameron's at first. Art Howe's gone to the pen for right-hander Jim Messier, who between Tampa Bay and Oakland had a terrific year last season. He has come on to face Edgar Martinez, who is the potential go-ahead run. It's four two A's, bottom of the seventh. Martinez with another base hit. Ichiro's going to score. Cameron's going to stop at third. Edgar Martinez is three for three, and the Mariners are back within one. Very uncharacteristic of Edgar Martinez. New pitcher coming in. Hadn't had any success against him. One for ten. Knows Jim Masir has that fantastic changeup. Sits on it, gets it, and smokes it in the right center field gap. Driving in a run, keeping the rally going. Now you have the tie and run on third base. No outs. Big situation with a left-handed batter coming in. Unbelievable. Two for 11 now. First and third, nobody out for John Olaru. Strike on the outside corner. Edgar Martinez with a base hit to left in the first. He walked in the third, single to right center in the fifth, and then to right field in the seventh. Three line drives, and he has sprayed them all over the ballpark. Olerud with a base hit in the left center. Cameron will score. Martinez stops at second, and this game is tied. professional hitters Edgar Martinez change up sitting on it hits it the other way not trying to pull the ball John Olerud same situation staying in the middle of the ballpark not rolling over hitting into a double play content to take what the pitchers offering you now Art Howe's got to be thinking how do I minimize the damage get my team back in here to swing the bat Brett Boone is the batter. Chavez at third in on the grass, charging from first Giambi, and Boone does not show bunt. Edgar Martinez at second, John Olerud at first. Neither runs well. That's not getting cheated. The situation that now you gave him a shot to take his hack. Now you might want him to bunt in this situation. But let's say he gets the bunt down and he sacrifices him. Then you have the left-handed hitter and Al Martin coming up. Could possibly walk him to load the bases. Yet you set up a double play situation to go against David Bell. Seattle third base coach Dave Myers just came all the way down to the plate to give Boone the sign verbally. To give the A's the impression he was giving him a sign, just to make sure there's no confusion right now. Two runs in to tie the game. Two on with nobody out. Boone squares a bunt up the first base line. Giambi over to first with a sure out on the sacrifice. Moves the runners to second and third.
set up a situation where you have an open base. I'm going to play the infield and see how this situation goes. Art Howe probably going to elect to walk him on four pitches. There's Ramon Hernandez sticking up four fingers for the intentional walk. Now you have the double play set up. David Bell is the next scheduled hitter. Now, more often than not, this is how the Mariners are going to score their runs this year. They'll be patient, take pitches, come up with the base hits, move runners along. Lou Pinella knows that with Griffey gone, A-Rod gone, and the Kingdom gone, life will never be the same again. Not better, not worse, just different. And who started this rally? Ichiro. The new guy. Jay Buhner telling him what a great job. Brett Boone taking himself out. Not part of his game, getting the bunt down. Very effective. The guys are going to be asked to do things like that, Dan. Things that they're not normally used to doing, they're going to be asked and called upon to do it. Pitching coach Rick Peterson to the mound to talk with the Monsieur with the bases loaded, one out, and a bell coming up in a tie game. Left-hander Mark Guthrie has been ready for a while if they need him. But the left-handed hitters have come and gone. Olerud and Martin. Well, possibly getting ready for a pinch hit by Tom Lampkin for Dan Wilson in the next situation. But task at hand is David Bell. Bell tonight has grounded out and struck out twice. Martinez at third, Olerud at second, and Martin down at first, 0-1, the count on a bell. Well, they've already seen one Seattle hitter who didn't have much success at all against Messier come through tonight, and that's Edgar. Bell hasn't had any success against him. Here, who broke into the majors with Seattle back in 1995. And Giambi wasn't budging. He, the first baseman wasn't on the bag, wasn't near the bag. And when Masir looked at him, Giambi just kind of put up his hands as if to say, don't throw it over here. Jason's going, bases were loaded. <laughs> he had a hard but foul down the left side, and it's 0-2. Respectable numbers for Bell in his career with the bases loaded. We've seen the successful hitters this inning against Jim Messier, both working the opposite field. David Bell out in front of both of those changeups. Now Jim Messier has them wherever he wants them with a fastball or changeup. Inside, one and two. Bell just looking for the fly ball deep enough to get Edgar Martinez home with a go ahead run. Two from Messier. Just missed. Two balls and two strikes. A 4 nothing Oakland lead from back in the fourth inning is all gone now. Matthews charged with a couple of runs this inning. And all three runners on base. Messier's responsibility. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off. expression doesn't change a whole lot as you watch him over the course of the game. Again the 2-2. Ground ball down to third. Chavez coming to the plate. And they'll force Martinez there for the second out. Chavez only going to get one out knows he can't turn two 
Get the simple out at home plate. Nice, strong, accurate throw to Ramon Fernandez. Good fastball on the inside part. Jams David Bell. Gets out of the box good. Get the sure out. Keep the score tied. So they're still loaded now with two outs. And the batter is the catcher, Dan Wilson. Wilson denied one for three with an RBI single. Very good numbers for Wilson over the course of his career with the bases loaded. He'd settle for another one of those bloops like he had in the fourth that dropped just over the head of Giambi out in right field. 0 and 2. Here's Jim Masir in that nasty changeup. Such deception, great arm speed, great action on the pitch. Only throws 87, 88 miles an hour, but after that changeup, one of those 95 mile an hour fastball, same effect. Fastball outside, a ball and two strikes on Wilson. This inning began way back when with Ichiro banging a base hit up the middle, his first hit in a Seattle uniform. A walk a couple of hits later, a sacrifice, and Seattle had a couple of runs to tie it. One two pitch. Wilson a swing and a miss, and Hernandez will complete it down to first base, strike out to end the inning. As Seattle gets a couple and through seven, tied at four. ESPN 2's Major League Baseball Opening Day is presented by Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. And in part by Budweiser. With a crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer, this Bud's for you. And by WorldCom, Generation D. In front of the largest crowd in the brief history of Safeco Field, 45,911. The Mariners have rallied back from a 4 to nothing deficit to tie it at 4 heading to the 8th inning. And a new pitcher has come out of the Seattle pen. This bullpen may be the deepest and best in this league. Left-hander Arthur Rhodes is on here to work the 8th. Hard thrower, fastball, curveball, changeup. Everybody they bring out of that pen. Jeff Nelson has that whammo frisbee slider. Paniagua throws hard. Arthur Rhodes, left-handed stopper. Change in left field as well. Anthony Sanders has come on for Al Martin. Martin's spot not due to come up again for a couple of innings in the batting order, but Sanders is a superior defensive player. Bottom third of the order for the A's. Terrence Long, Jeremy Giambi, and Ramon Hernandez scheduled against Arthur Rhodes here in the eighth inning. Long will look at his strike. Bounces over to Adam Pyatt on deck for Jeremy Giambi, that right field platoon situation. A breakthrough season. Allowed them to trade Matt Stairs. Ground ball over the mound, a long way goes Boone. And he can't make a play. Even if he doesn't fumble it, I don't know that he gets long, who runs very well. Little chopper. Nice at bat by Terrence Long staying in there against Arthur Rhodes. Tough play for Brett Boone again, Dan. I had no chance of throwing Terrence out. Smelling that first hit. One of those things you try and do opening day. Get those zero zero zeros off the board. <laughs> Here's Adam Pyatt. Last year hit 299 over the A's. The year before that at double A hit 345 with 39 homers. Really a natural third baseman who has learned to play the outfield just to get some of the bats as a platoon player with Jeremy Giambi. Right handed bat against the left hander Rhodes. Long at first already has a stolen base here tonight. Hyatt shows bunt and fouls it off. You're going to see an example of a young hitter who hasn't been called upon to bunt much in the minor leagues. 
Triple crown winner in double A. Now he's up here trying to contribute in a situation. That's why when you come to the ballpark and you see your, the, the batting practice, the pregame BP, why these guys bear down and concentrate trying to get those bunts down because there's a situation where he needs to get this ball down somehow, some way. See if Art Howe puts it on again with the count 0 and 1. He does, and Pyatt does get it down. Rhodes off the mound to make the play. Sacrifice moves long into scoring position. Cold night sitting there on the bench all night, called upon to pinch hit, and boy, great job of getting a bunt down for a guy that doesn't do it all that often. The Oakland lineup is loaded with the guys who in high school, college, the minors all hit third or fourth. Exactly. <laughs> Bash. <laughs> Here's Ramon Hernandez. Maybe he's one guy who didn't necessarily hit third or fourth his entire life, but he's hit like he should here tonight. Doubled and scored in the third. Drove in a run with a base hit in the fourth and then hit the ball sharply to center field in the fifth. So he's two for three as he faces Rhodes with the go-ahead run out at second and one out here in the top of the eighth. Side to Hernandez, ball one. Smoked three balls tonight. Now you have first base open with a left-handed batter on deck. Arthur Rhodes, not very fun to face as for a left-handed hitter, although Terrence Long did get a big hit. One of Jason Giambi's nemesis. Pretty good cut by Hernandez on a high fastball, and it's one and one. Fastball up in the zone. Ramon with the leg kick. Pulling off the ball just a hair, but this ball explodes out of Arthur Rhodes' hands. Gets by him just a bit. Arthur Rhodes, one of these guys who can throw the fastball up at the new upper end of the strike zone. Misses low, ball two. Missed the lower end of the strike zone there. <laughs> I think Arthur Rhodes wants this one. A snap down out of the zone. Elevate for effect, pitch down in the zone. Still going to be the same for all the pitchers, Dan. Look back and long out at second base. Two and two, the count on Hernandez. And Dan Wilson got crossed up on that pitch. I'm going to go out and have a word. I'm looking breaking ball, and you throw one 92 miles an hour at my face mask. Getting their sign straight. Look at how Dan Wilson set up. We talked about that position ready to blow. Oh. That's not a curveball. <laughs> Folks, you don't understand how hard that is to keep your glove there on the same plane. The concentration that it takes, especially late in the game, been out here for three hours, 92 miles an hour with movement when you're expecting the ball to break off a different plane is pretty darn hard. doesn't like it at all, but it's called strike three. Okay. Arthur Rhodes, four-seam fastball on the inside corner. Umpire will give you this pitch. That's a strike. Centers Dan Wilson right on the mask. That is a riding fastball. Look at Ramon has no chance, doesn't even bother to try and pull the trigger. Now Johnny Damon, a runner at second, two down, tie game. Ball one to Damon. You saw a shot of Lou Pinella a few moments ago up on the top step of the dugout and moving all of his outfielders around toward left field. Rhodes, a lefty who throws hard. Damon, a left-handed batter. Pinella figuring Damon is most likely to take the ball the other way. Tried to, chopper down to third. Inning over. Good job by Rhodes after the leadoff man reached down to the bottom of the eighth. Tied at four. And back at Safeco in the bottom of the eighth inning. Tied at four between the A's and the Mariners. So look at the Home Depot in game box. Edgar Martinez, three for three, all singles, a big RBI. Mike Cameron, though, give him a lot of credit. A guy who's not normally known for his patience, has drawn four walks tonight. He has come around to score twice. Carlos Guillen leads off the bottom of the eighth inning against Jim Messier. 
It'll begin Ichiro and Cameron do up here in the bottom of the eighth. And if anybody reaches, Edgar Martinez. Garcia, Tim Hudson started this game. Garcia lasted only three and a third. Hudson went five. Two and one, the count on again. Anything that works. Get your bat, your glove, <laughs> your feet. do in bottom of the eighth innings walk the leadoff hitter and Jim Masir falling behind three and one. Leadoff man is aboard. Well now we'll see Lou and his small ball tactics with the new guy. For a guy who hardly ever bunted in Japan. Will he be asked to do it here? And a base hit score to run his last time up, one for four overall. And he's for sure expecting it. Chavez way in on the grass. This year just held the ball to see if Ichiro would give anything away. Line. He can fly. They throw it away. He in rounding third. He'll be held. Ichiro to second. His speed was the difference there. Wow. Talk about putting pressure on a defense. Let's talk about it, Dan. A guy that hasn't done this much in his life. Look at the acceleration down the baseline. Causes the bad throw up the line and is on second base. Second and third. Nobody out. The heart of the order coming up. Masir and Hernandez. Ramon set a pick on his own pitcher. Couldn't get out of the way. Both guys trying to attack the ball. But that's what speed does for you. Gets you in a hurry. Throws you off balance creates havoc. Second and third, nobody out for Mike Cameron. Let's take a look at it again. First of all, great pitch to bunt. Down out over the plate. Ramon Hernandez is going for it, but nobody calls for it. Grabs a hold of Jim Masir's arm, trying to get out of the way. Has no chance to make an accurate throw. It's been scored a base hit and then a throwing error. On Masir, runners at second and third. The crowd in a disagreement with that high strike call. A productive night for Mike Cameron, even though he doesn't have an official at a bat yet. Four plate appearances, four walks. But he has set the table very nicely for the guy behind him, Edgar Martinez. 1-1. Inside the camera, the ball two. Second is Cameron. It's a fly ball high, but not all that deep to center. Guillen to third. Long the catch. Guillen bluffs to start. The throw was way off line, but the runner was sent back. About the only rational explanation I have for that is you have Edgar Martinez and John Olaru coming up. You're not going to want to go through the double play. This ball is plenty deep to score a run. I have no idea why he's not sent on this. Can easily score on that. Again, hindsight, but Mike Cameron deserves a sacrifice fly on that ball. 
got to believe you got to send them. And they're not going to pitch to Edgar Martinez. They'll put them on, load the bases, bring up Olerud, and in all likelihood to go to the pen for the left-hander to face him. So Edgar Martinez will reach base for the fifth time in this game. Three singles, two walks. And it'll be up to Olerud, who had an RBI single his last time up. Both teams have let a lot of runners hang out on the bases tonight. Oakland has left nine on. Seattle has left ten on already tonight. The call has gone for the left-hander, Mark Guthrie. Disappointing outing for Jim Messier, to say the least. Bases loaded, one out, lefty-lefty matchup on the way when we return to Safeco Field in Seattle. Lou Pinella aging by the minute here tonight. The Mariners have rallied from a 4 to nothing deficit to tie it, but let an opportunity slip away when again didn't try to come home from third. Now it's bases loaded, one out. The left-hander Mark Guthrie is on. Last year, spent time with the Cubs and the Devil Rays and the Blue Jays. Now works as one of the two lefties out of the Oakland pad, Mike McNatty the other. He comes on here with the bases loaded, only one out to face left-hand hitting John Olerud, who had an RBI single his last time up. There's the guy they want to get home. Ian's at third, Ichiro at second, and Edgar at first. John Olerud did not have a home run against lefties last year and had one of his worst years hitting against lefties overall in his career. He's a pretty respectable 275 against them. Well, you're looking for something to elevate, get a fly ball to the outfield, poke a ball in a hole so they can't turn a double play. Just something to get that runner from third in. We'll do that. Deep in the alley to left center. Long runs it down. Guillen's going to score. Ichiro comes to third, and Seattle takes the lead. something up out over the plate key is elevation not exactly where Jim where Guthrie wanted this pitch all John Olerud did was lay the barrel on the ball fly ball deep enough to score the run second sacrifice fly for the Mariners tonight they don't have an extra base hit in this game but this is the way as we mentioned a couple of times they're going to have to find ways to try and score runs and for the second inning in a row, for the second rally in a row, Ichiro right in the middle of it. Brett Boone, the batter, he got a bunt down last inning. Takes it low, ball one. Also has a sacrifice fly. One-zero from Guthrie. And it's bounced in ball two. situation where that is the key on third base that run you have second base open go after the young hitter and Anthony Sanders who's on deck right now is the Sasaki warming up in the bullpen lights out Boone again not getting cheated when he swings the bat it's two and one Seattle, bottom of the eighth inning, Ichiro at third. Edgar Martinez at first. Two and two, the count on Boone. All of a 
sudden, Dane DeMuth, last couple innings have had that high strike zone working, although that one did come down nice at the end. And the strike zone is supposed to be several inches above the belt. Edgar doesn't get many of those anymore. <laughs> Three hits tonight for Martinez. And a couple of walks as well. He's been on base five times. 2-2. Two -two. Just inside and a full count. And now Martinez will be off and running from first. Jason Giambi looking for instructions. You want me to play behind him or you want me to hold him on? Going behind. Slow, methodical comeback for the Mariners here tonight to take the lead now in the bottom of the eighth. 3-2 pitch, grounded out to Ortiz at second, and the inning is over. But the Mariners have the lead, and they've got Kazu Sasaki probably coming in, but it's Ortiz, Giambi, and signs coming up. Well, what a night it potentially could be for the Japanese contingent of the Seattle Mariners. Remember, this game is being beamed back live to Japan on television, high-definition television, and also being broadcast on radio. Many of them came to see Ichiro, his regular season debut with the Mariners. They know about a Kazuhiro Sasaki from a year ago, but it's the dynamic duo from Japan who could each play major roles in this game. Ichiro with a couple of base hits his last two times up. He scored a run, and now Sasaki the rookie of the year last year after saving 37 games for the Mariners comes on to the knife to try and protect a one run lead fastball forkball simple right a fastball rides up and in on you forkball breaks down off that same plane as the fastball look at those numbers outstanding struggled early in the year came over with high expectations put a lot of pressure on himself settled down and became a dominant closer that they're counting on for these type of situations. Not going to be easy for Sasaki here tonight, given that Jason Giambi is the second hitter coming up for the A's here in the ninth inning. Jose Ortiz, the second of Aceman's up first. Olmedo signs due up third. Ortiz with a two-run single back in the fourth, then hit the ball about 400 feet to center field for a loud out of the sixth. Many of the almost 46,000 still here with the Mariners leading by one in the ninth. And a strike taken by Ortiz. Early on last season, Sasaki struggled a little bit, but... The further into the season he got, the better he got. He was lights out in the second half. 0 oh and 2. So here's the problem I have. You're coming in, you know Sasaki with an unhittable forkball when he throws it where you want to. So you go up trying to work the count. Sometimes your manager says, take the first pitch. Well, that first pitch was a fastball belt high out over the plate, and you're up there trying to work the count. My theory is go up, first straight thing you see, let it fly. Just low. Oh, Sasaki wanted that one. I think everybody wanted that one. <laughs> Here's that fork ball. Dan Wilson set up on the outside corner. Just broke down below the knees. Two. Hit into center field, a base hit for Ortiz. His second hit of the night of the tying run is aboard. Let's go to our colleagues at the Tokyo Broadcasting System to listen in on Sasaki and Giambi. Hi. He's saying, why did you throw a fastball? 
うなずけないんですよねさあジオンビーですシーズンは左バッターに打たれたその左バッターを抑えるためにスイーを開発したという First pitch to Giambi a little bit high I think he said Giambi's got no business even facing Sasaki in this kind of situation Well I was interrupting them but Sasaki got beat with a fastball up in the zone by Ortiz Two good fork balls I'm going to be real careful with Jason Giambi in his selection of throwing him a fastball 0 for 2 and a couple of walks for Giambi tonight Fly ball to left field, pretty deep. Sanders back, has room, one down. The most dangerous man in the Oakland lineup has just been retired. Now Olmedo signs the DH, who's one for four with an RBI double. Ortiz, the base runner at first with one out. He runs pretty well. Made 22 steals a year ago. On the edge of their seats here at Safeco. Now Sasaki tries to put the exclamation point on what Ichiro really got going the last couple of innings offensively. Yes, exactly right. Saki says that years ago in Japan, he and Ichiro talked of someday perhaps playing together in the major leagues. Ground ball down to third. One. Ball game. Seattle comes back to win it. Suzuki and Sasaki and the Mariners are 1 0. All made possible by the outstanding relief job by Brett Tomko coming in, shutting the door on the Oakland A's, allowing his team to come back. Great night all around for those two gentlemen. Almost 46,000 people in attendance here in Seattle tonight saw their team fall behind four to nothing early and slowly but surely scrap their way back into it. Outstanding relief work, as you mentioned, some timely hitting, a couple of bunts, a couple of sacrifice flies, and the Mariners win on opening night five to four. Once again, the final from Seattle. The Mariners 5 and the A's 4. Coming up to next year on ESPN2, it's RPM Tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Mike McFarland, our entire crew, I'm Dan Schulman saying good night from Seattle. The Mariners win 5-4. to four. We now leave you with a look back at some of the best from opening day 2001.